Humble, but it happens. Anyway, folks, uh, still here at the Durango Gem Show, Four Corners, Jim and Mineral Show, in Durango, Colorado. Thank you, everybody, that watched the video yesterday. <clears throat> it was a lot of fun. I'm going to go check out this building, see if we can't get yelled at again. I only got yelled at by one person yesterday, which is pretty good. Uh, that's below average. <laughs> then we'll come outside and uh, take a look at some cool rocks. This vendor right here is a good friend of mine from Mexico. They vend at the Miners Co-op. Uh, gonna have to wait to do the outdoor stuff until later because the phone overheats. This is super cool. Looks very familiar, like if it's uh, Katie Mountain material. But it seems a little too perfect. It's probably Mexican. Some nice moss right here. Hey, my friend. Uh, where is, uh, is this from the Katy Mountains in Cal uh, California? All of these here are from the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. Oh, fantastic. It's what they call like Moroccan seam or whatever. Um, do you take a card, sir? Do you take a card? Oh. <laughs> Cash is king. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely, I'll buy that from you, <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, actually, I'll buy that. I'll give you a five for that. It's cool. It's cool. Thank you, sir. Pretty cool material. Uh, probably just give it away or something. It's really cool. I love when I'm wrong. Because <laughs> it feels so right. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Cameron. Yeah, I try to educate people on gem and minerals and stuff. I get a couple hundred people watching sometimes. All right. Cool. Appreciate it, Dave. And uh, Dave, how'd you know? How'd you know my name? Oh, I didn't. Oh. Say Dave. oh okay, you said, dude. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still sleeping. I'm like just waking up. Uh, do you do all the slabbing yourself? Yeah. Oh, cool. What kind of saw do you use? Old Highlands? Old Highlands. Nice. Absolutely. It's gonna, they're, they're gonna, and they're gonna outlive us all. <laughs> when I think of uh, Moroccan seam, or Indonesian seam, this is what I think of. How are you doing there, Largent? Thanks for watching again. We're here at the Durango show again. I woke up super late today, but I'm feeling good. $2 each. Or six for ten. Not a bad deal. Uh, this is Brazilian for sure. Uh, this, I don't know. <clears throat> Some people might call this carnelian just because it's orange or red. In my opinion, uh, carnelian's actually regional to Jaipur. But I get a lot of flack for that. It's a weird dinosaur bone right here. The cells are so small and tight, you can almost not see them, and it almost looks like some kind of mica or something inside there, but it's the cell structure is just really, really tight. There's a piece of plume. A little bit of formation there. Anyway, if you're just not tuning in, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, all that stuff. Uh... Oh, dude, thank you, Largen. I really appreciate you sharing. This is a cool piece right here. A little too thin uh, to really shape, but you could polish just the face. It'd be pretty cool. We're going to go focus on the indoor section for a little bit. The other indoor section over there. Because it's so hot that it will crash the camera. This is pretty cool. And then we'll come outside and we'll take a look at some rough stuff. Using my old gimbal today. It's taking a little bit of learning again. This is what they call, um, I think they call it Blue Hill. Some people call it Gary Green. And there's a lot of like Blue argument. Blue Mountain. That's what it is. Have you ever heard the story that some people say it's not like 
that the Gary Green or whatever isn't really a wood no. and that it's just a total misconception that everyone's selling? You've heard that before. Very interesting. I've, I've heard it for the first time and that like perhaps a lot of it has been claim jumped. Uh, do you mind if I go look at it? Oh, what a blessing, dude. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's like when they say, oh, this is uh, Bumblebee Jasper. This mm -hmm. is... Uh, it's, no <laughs> <laughs> it's on this side, sir? Oh, sorry, my friend. Yeah, so uh, the Gary Green, or that people are calling, like, Petrified. Ah, that's a grape. That's only 25 bucks? Yep. Oh, you're giving this thing away, dude. You take a card? Yeah. That is super nice. That's a huge chunk for $25, 3.5 pounds. Uh, you could literally cut a couple slabs off of that and sell it for 25 bucks. <laughs> if this thing is not going after I get um, out of the indoor section, I am buying this thing. But yeah, I was talking to this gentleman who's um, in uh, California who's from Idaho, he's a Thunder Egg miner, and he was saying that this material actually uh, isn't a petrified bogwood like a lot of people are selling it as, and that perhaps a lot of the older stock that's being sold as a petrified bogwood was given that name because the material was claim jumped. But uh, this is cool. This has probably been out of the ground for many years, and it's an amazing price. And if this gentleman and lady are the designer, they are really good artists. Are you the designers? Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that Marenzi is stunning. Did you get the Marenzi from McKay? I got it from a lady down in Tombstone. Oh, cool. Ah! That's fantastic. If you don't mind, I'm going to take it to the out of it so far. This is definitely material that uh, nobody would complain if you backed it just to, to, to make it work. I'm enough. thinking I'm just going <laughs> to put a necklace like this, just polish this in the best and just make a necklace out of it. Stunning. Like Heck yeah. <laughs> Maybe ground this a little bit. But, or I'll take it on my trim saw and cut another piece off of it. And... How long have you been uh, making jewelry? A little over two years now. Did you start with the lapidary or did you start with the I, silver? I started lapidary first and then uh, YouTube self-taught. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm starting to see like more people starting with the silver nowadays than with the lapidary, perhaps because of just the equipment is so expensive and the used market is so inflated right now. I used to be able to get four wheel machines in Tucson used for 50 bucks. Now you're looking at four or five hundred dollars and uh, an acetylene tank. It's a lot more affordable than the two-wheel lower tone or something. Yeah, no, I've got a cap key made, and yeah. I've got an old HP four-wheel with a trim saw, you know, fiber saw on the top Do you ever shape cabs and put them in the vibro? All the time. Oh, and, and will it maintain a good enough bezel to set in silver? So I don't, I do all of the work first, all the way to uh, semi-polish you know, like a 3000, and then I only put it in with uh, when I'm coming. Oh, so you're just getting your final polish from the Vibro, so it's not destroying your edges. Perfect. Every now and then, if you don't put enough uh, cushion in, you beat each other up. That something's gonna break. <laughs> the agate's going to breed up something. your turquoise, huh? Yeah. I'll never put agate with turquoise, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and most of the time, I never put the turquoise in the Vibro laps. I usually use buff wheels and a lot of Zam and things like that because it's just it's too soft to throw in there but do you think zam is a chrome oxide it is okay i called zam they said it wasn't and the lady's like it's green rouge that's all i know it's oh, a couple different green rouges and i think it's a because it does metal so well i mean it advertises metal and uh, i've asked a lot of pros and nobody seems to know no it is <clears throat> that's what i thought and fabulousters aluminum yeah that's what i thought and like a greasy matrix can i use them both on what's if, I can't get, if I can't get something on my 50,000 diamond pallet paste, then there's certain stones that buff way better than trying to felt wheel or leather. Oh, for sure. I can get a better polish 
uh, with turquoise that's 600 grit yeah. from Zam than I could taking a certain agates all the way to 3,000. Yeah. And then attempting cerium. <laughs> You're a great lapidary and a stunning jeweler, my friend. Thank you. Do you have a card by chance? Yeah. Weeping rocks. Can any, can the folks at home find you in Denver or Tucson? Not yet. Um, we're out of pace in Arizona. Oh, cool. I was just there. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <clears throat> I went to Diamond Point. Crystal yeah. Point? Diamond Point. Diamond Point. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you really got to talk to locals, though, to find the good stuff. <laughs> and they're super friendly. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wow, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And these aren't from Diamond Point. <laughs> this is from your honey hole, huh? Yeah. Oh, I completely and understand. I got a bunch more. Well, if you mind if I take this to the light really quick? Yeah, it's a perfume more. It's the same, same type of... This is perfect. Um, If you don't mind me asking, do they ever find in hydros of this? Uh, sometimes, yes. Do, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I don't want to drop it. I'm a little, just want to be careful. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, I've seen it and they even find it in amethyst up there. No way. So a lot of this stuff is amethyst when it originates, but it sits out in the sun too long on the surface that it just it bleaches, out. Out. It bleaches out. That is incredible. So Do they ever, um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> if you're willing to dig, which is the ground is really hard to dig in, but if you're willing to dig, you've got a good chance of maybe finding one. Is this Florida material? There's some necklaces I made out of it. Yo! That is fantastic. They're so awesome. I love um, that. I love fossilizing for this agatized coral from Florida. It's some of my favorite. Uh, are you using cerium? Um, no, that, that stuff actually is, uh, since it's agate, I'm just running them on my diamond uh, paste. You know, probably uh, 14,000. <laughs> well, you're doing a great job. Yeah. I would have bet money that you were using cerium oxide on a leather wheel or something no, because... It's just on a felt, felt wheel with uh, diamond paste. You're doing really good. Better than most people could do if they were trying cerium. I live in Florida my whole life and I... Never knew that I, I could. know this stuff exists until a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah. And a friend of this guy I met in Sedona loved my stuff and we, he bought some stuff and he came back. He was like, Have you ever had an advertised portal? I go, I've heard of it. He came back and he gave me this piece. It was about, it was a hollow tube about this big. And I cut it. And oh I made my. This for my wife. And then I ran across this lot uh, what, when we were in Kingman back. A month ago in Kingman, a lady had all of this, and she was just, she didn't want it, so I, she gave me a really good deal on it. Oh, fantastic. And you're, you must have got it for a really good deal, because you're selling it for a really good deal. Uh, I hear that they closed down that Rux pit that had the calcite clams. I don't know. Which is a shame. I mean, I can imagine it's a good time to close the mines. Yeah. It's a renaissance of gemstones right now, and... <laughs> I can't appre I can't tell you how much I appreciate your kindness, hey, my friend. Time. Thank you. Thank you. You're a great lapidary, dude. <laughs> These folks are super duper kind. At a pace in Arizona, we're gonna go inside. Mr. Duffy, you like that necklace? I'm so happy that you got the necklace, my friend. I put a lot of love into that. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Got a bad feeling. Dave sent me the necklace and it was bringing me good luck, attracting other things to me. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Hey, do you vend at the Denver Gem Show? No. Okay, because I, I, my friend of mine bought one of your Electroforms yesterday. Uh, a saguaro cactus, I think. Oh, yes, I that. Yeah, what yeah, was the turquoise? Mine. It was fantastic. King, uh, the King mine. That's I what I thought. Oh, well, that's why it's probably so good. Right? I love it. I love doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mind if, if I share you some of your work with folks at home? Yo, thank you, one of the mine, for the super chat. I really appreciate you, my friend. 
I love you, Ricky. So, Electroform. Uh, I asked somebody about um, why do you so often see it in copper? And I guess it has something to do with um, that what you braise during the process doesn't really come in other colors. Like you can't use silver. You can use silver color, but it tends to tarnish really fast. I think Electroform is a fantastic medium for folks who, if you've just been collecting cabs for years, Electroform is the way to like affordably go about working it. This young lady is just killing it over here. How much is this? I'm gonna have to buy that for Lynn. 60 bucks, not a bad deal at all. That's a really cool piece of char, right? Has um, a lot of matrix, but it's got the good matrix. To me, I prefer the black in the charite over the quartz. <clears throat> wow, look at that. That tree on a beautiful piece of what looks like Veracruz. Fantastic. I'm sorry, am I in your way? Is it really? Fantastic. Really, it's from Silverton. I thought it was from Veracruz. That's fantastic. Man. Ah. Uh, were you excited? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're birthing it, you know? It is your baby. You're a really great artist. So my friend who bought a necklace from this young lady yesterday was asking how would you go about casting a mushroom? I, I said perhaps you'd put it in microcrystalline wax, then do lost wax casting, burn it out, cast it in metal, then <coughs> um, go from there duplicating it. But there's so many different ways. Look at that octo. Nice piece of Kingman again. Labradorite butterfly. Look at this. This is a reflector. That is so awesome. <laughs> it's great. How long have you been doing Electroform? Uh, folks were asking, is it dangerous? Can you hurt yourself, like burn yourself or anything? Oh, wow. Yeah. You're doing stuff over here. So the process so here you hook up your piece from here you'll paint on a conductive paint on where you want the copper to go and then you put on a rubber makeup I don't have any on there now but usually you put a rubber makeup on there because you hook this up and then you put in this it's essentially battery acid it's copper sulfide it's not kool-aid no it's watered down if you get some of this <laughs> on your skin it could burn so you holy smoke up and then you run a current through it with this amplifier It'll pull the copper from the wire and form it onto where you have that paint. Wow. That's what sets it. This so way. it's your plating. Plating. Exactly. I was always under the impression it's that. Um, the same, but it's like a slightly different, like technically, I think. I don't yeah, know, I mean, exactly the plating enough for me. Yeah. yeah. I, I was always under the impression that it um, you used like a metal tape and then you solder onto it. No. No, yeah, I know. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised. That is. <laughs> That is too cool. So that way I can work with more organic material. And anyway, you're super busy, and I don't want to scare away folks, so I'm going to come bug you a little bit later. You're great. <laughs> awesome. Super talented young lady. These flora, they're definitely really nice quality. Where are they from? Are the fluorites from New Mexico as well? Yeah. Socorro. Have you ever been? Did you, did you mine these? Yeah, our friend owns the Blanchard mine. So you must go to the Socorro Gem Symposium? I haven't been. I've, I've heard been. nice things. Yeah. I've never been either. Yeah, me too, yeah. Are you New Mexican? No, I live here in Durango. I hear if you're New Mexican, the Socorro Gem Museum will do analysis on your stones for oh. like 10 bucks. Sick. Yeah. Yeah, our, our friend has a bunch of stuff at that museum. How much would uh, this piece be? 
This would be 10 bucks, bro. I'll take it, man. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, you see that one's got a little bit of bi color in there, blue and purple. Uh, do you mind if I hold it? Yeah, Let's see if I can get it for the folks at home. Just filming it for your friends, or you got a channel or something? I have a channel where I teach people mostly how to do lapidary. Uh, called Lapidary Dave. Okay. But uh, what's YouTube? yeah? But what's been working like the most is filming the Tucson and Denver shows. Yeah. And so now, like, I gotta drive all the shows. It's awesome. what ended up working. That's funny. But um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I, I love it. I'm going to buy that from you, my friend. Yeah, that's it. Um, can I pay you? And if you don't mind, I pick it up a little bit. Yeah, of course. Where are you guys at? Taos. Oh, awesome, man. That's where my good friend, who, uh, he's like, do you know Fred Ortega? Um. Like his name's all over rocks in New Mexico. You know, the one of the stores... Uh, one of the rock shops has a whole section. It's all stuff he does with his name on it. Mm -hmm. I want to say yeah, but yeah. like the yeah. New Mexican names, the Ortegas, the Mondragon, That's like true. the Garcia, Garcia. It's like it's all blending into one thing. And yeah. like, I and there's such a powerful old family yep. that like I <laughs> I want to yeah. say yeah, but I really yeah, don't know. He lives in this like 300 year old stone house with like great grandpa. Can I trouble you for to hold this for a second? Not at all. I just want to grab my water. Yeah. And it, it won't. It's so old. That yeah. It won't like uh, stand up by itself. And I'm so thirsty. <laughs> yeah, bro. You got to stay hydrated on a day like this. Oh man, yeah. I was hanging out too much in California. I didn't need to be as hydrated. Now yeah. Like now that it's so dry as fuck. And I'm just toast. Yeah. Yeah. This is all. Um, I wish I had more to show you, but this is all amethyst and stuff from. Silverton area. We had a loose mining farm up there. So, you know, there were these lighter amethysts, and there were the, the amethyst phantoms. <coughs> Those are fantastic. What are you selling these for? These are 20, this one's 40. Wow, that's super affordable. Yeah, I was nice. thinking double. Yeah, no, I'm just, at this point, it's the last day. I'm trying to just... Get him a good home, huh? Moving to Alaska for the next couple months. Holy smokes. I'm just selling as much as I can. <laughs> what are you doing in Alaska? Um, we're going down the Noatak River canoeing, but we'll also be fishing. Okay, you're not you're not going to, like, homestead and no, fight off grizzly bears and stuff. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you're, going, you're going for fun. If, if the grizzly wants to take me, I might just submit and get Oh, my gosh. Large and these are beautiful. Those light amethysts are beautiful. They sure are. And that one, this is the cheapest one because it's got a couple dings. I was doing this one for 10. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to have to come back for that. You take a card? No, but I do have Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to come back for this, sweetie. If it's not gone. If anybody at home wants it, you can PayPal me and I'll pick it up and mail it to you. You got to pay for shipping, though. <sighs> How you doing, Patrick? Yeah, these are stunning. Um, this is unique. Yeah, that's super unique. I call that the amethyst sun. Bada bing. Uh, have you ever harvested, like, harvested this material yourself? That's it all. I'll harvest it all. Oh, cool. Fantastic. Yeah, we paid a guy who has a gold mine to dig the amethyst up, and this all came from that. Do you have to use iron out or anything? Yeah, on some of it. Um, on these, I didn't really. I just used a high-pressure water gun. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. On these, though, it took a lot of iron out. Uh, like a couple days worth or? A couple weeks. Wow, I'm really? Multiple baths over a couple months. Everything here is five a piece or three for ten. And then, like anything in these boxes is part of that. Thank you, my friend. I'll chat with you soon. And this is Dan the Cabman, a good friend of mine. You folks probably seen me. Oh, show off his stuff for many years. How you doing, Danny? You ready to go home? Uh, you gonna be in Denver? Of course. Of course. Do you have anything new? 
<laughs> Yo, dude, that's tough to tell, dude. I mean, I've known you guys for a while. You know, I guess these, I haven't really seen these. Oh, you, you folks, oh yeah. I, last time I saw you guys were making rings. Are you guys making other, like, pendants and bracelets and stuff now? Oh, do you mind if I share some of those with the people at home? Oh, thank you so much. That's a nice seam. <laughs> is, is, the stabilizing, it's got to be really expensive. Yeah, well, it is, but, you know, it's good stuff, too. Yeah, look how dark that is. It's brilliant. It's freaking gorgeous. I think I'm eating Rockabolo or Naja that big, huh? Oh, man, that'd be a baller <laughs> for this Bolo. <laughs> like, King Solomon's like breast. Oh, jeez. I couldn't that. pull it off. <laughs> And uh, this is new too. Yeah, all of the bins right there are new. I can't bring this around yet. I got quite a few pieces. Just, uh, I come here to talk to you and I have to find the new stuff? <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. I know you, you're a hard working man. Whoa. What is that? It's not. Can't, Pito's just. Is it really? Yeah, that's a Nice, big chunk. A lot of post rock in it, too, though. I mean, yeah, but looks great. <laughs> I'd be oh tempted to cut between the gray, yeah. but you'd make a lot more money slicing it that way. Yeah, of course. Whoa, is that number eight? Yeah, this is number eight. Uh, I don't know. Where, I'm going to put that right here, my friend, if you don't mind. Sweet matrix. And whoever, they did a really good job on the processing because that material is easy to mess up. Because it's flaky right on there. It's well, so um, a lot of people were stabilizing it back in the day, and they, whatever they used turned yellow. Oh, okay. But uh, Daniel and his family... Uh, whoever they have doing it is just doing a spectacular job. That is beautiful. What? Is, that's not number eight, is yeah, it? It is. Oh, cool. It's just so chunky. What is that? Oh, that's what? Twenty pounds? Ten pounds? Oh, I'm wimpy. How much a pound on that one? Two fifty a pound. Oh, two fifty on that one. Oh, that's beautiful though for that. That's worth every penny of it. Yeah, this sells your uh, oh, sells your little one room one bath for a million dollars in towels right there. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Dude, Dan, uh, what are you asking for the number eight? Uh, they're both 2500 Yeah, this one is, you know, they're both great. That one has more producing, I would say, producing material. Yeah, that's right. But this is just such a classic American pattern. Exactly. Beautiful. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Like, so, like, I'd feel bad cutting it. Yeah. That's exactly right. I can get small, but that's not rare. Yeah. yeah, so you yeah, can see yeah, the yeah. line right there going down. That's the vein, and you don't really see a lot of vein of number eight. It's a material that they've been harvesting for well over a hundred years. Um, but most of the pieces you see are just the botroidal pattern. You don't see too much vein like you would this. But this one actually does have a little vein on the side. Yeah, you can tell, and it goes all the way around too. See, it goes all the way. If I were to brand it right here, you can see the turquoise going all the whole way. Wow. This is a good one right here. Dude. And this phenomenal. one just sells it right here, that nice tight Yeah. Edge. Did you did did you guys do the polishing on yeah, that little face? Noticed, yeah. You stuck yeah. that to your machine? Yeah, I was like, I have to wear it like this. And Show it off. Oh, oh man. man. Right here, I got this Beautiful. One. I think I got two or three windows on this one only. Are you still using your Hans? Yeah, I got it from those guys uh, in India. Mm -hmm. They don't they come anymore. Tools oh, jewel and tools. They don't come anymore. They haven't came since COVID and all that stuff. Yeah, I guess it's tough. Yeah. Right but um, that was a really cool machine. I think it was the most affordable professional machine yeah, on the market. And it's not $1,000 anymore. Yeah, it's closer to two. Like, after shipping, you're looking at like 18. Yeah, yeah. So you got the screaming deal, dude. I got two of Really? Both eight? Both eight inch? Yeah, then I got two of them, and then they gave me the set of wheels for each machine for free, too. Oh, good. They better. Yeah, <laughs> paid cash too. So. Oh yeah, cash is king. Me, right? Is this uh, Campitos? Yeah, that's Campitos right there, yeah. You ever been to Campitos? Yes, our family owns the mine. No way, yeah. no way. Yeah. Oh man, you gotta take me over there. Yeah, we uh, it also produces the Sonoran Gold. We sold the Sonoran Gold right here today too. Where, do you have any here? Uh, no, I don't think we do. I think we sold it. Wait, that's not bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, <clears throat> Your white buffalo is really, really good. Um, Big sizes, too. 
Yeah, you don't see that. And I was just going to say, because a lot of it will crumble naturally, even good pieces. The Audison family who's mining it is actually stabilizing this material. Yeah, is this yours? Okay. I'm going to message you between me and you. I want to buy some stabilized rough because all the rough that they sell is unstabilized. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a trick. It's like, oh, you think you're getting this big rock, you ain't going to get no, you what you, get stuff. Yeah. you, it's going to crumble on you. You got to learn how to cut it too. It's a tricky thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the same, you can't cut against the, the pattern. You got to go with it. Hmm. And then, and then the, one of the tricks that we also found out, you got to cut it a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker than you would normally, with, especially with turquoise. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's show an example. Uh, yeah, you know, if this was one of his finer pieces of turquoise it wouldn't have to be as thick you probably get away with half as thick yeah, on other exactly. stones but you know even though it, some people might consider it thick it's not too thick to be set it's a good size and the girdle is really good it looks like he's doing like a nine degree girdle which is perfect for silversmiths um when you started did you always make a girdle <laughs> yeah i'm trying to focus on like doing a good girdle that's what they want you know that's the difference between a good cab and a great cab. Yeah, and that's also, I, I started with uh, making like just random, like freeform shapes on the dome. Like just, just grind it away, you know what I mean? Just make something happen and, you know, you, tool with it, you know? You've always been really good at hearts. Yeah. I try my best, but a lot of them, you know, you don't see the final cut too often. You know, there's a lot of them that they're just not for up to what I think is good quality. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so these are pretty top-notch for me in my opinion heck yeah yeah there's some rice and there's mix in there there's a and stuff. do you have a card on you my friend uh so they're at the kino show in tucson also jogs now right if you folks are in where france no way you going to france you like the food over there Oh, man. That was last week, I think. That was last week, right? Two weeks ago. <laughs> Did you like it? What'd you eat? You eat, you eat fish? I don't eat Okay, so that must have been tough. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, really? Weird. That's an American thing. French fries aren't French That is funny. Was it expensive? No, but, um, like, just like, like surviving. Not really. I think it's cheaper. I believe that. I don't think so. Well, maybe for this guy it's expensive. You're, you're a man of luxury. Look at this beautiful movie star right there. <laughs> Dan the Cabman on Instagram. If you have Instagram and you're not following Dan, you're missing out. Dan the Cabman, this gentleman can get you pretty much any variety of uh, turquoise that you've ever heard of, just message him. And he's got some new stuff. This stuff is gonna, this, this will not survive quartzite or Tucson. No. That's gonna be sold. Yeah. Yeah, that's some good liquid color too, you see? It's so deep. Yeah. And it's probably, wouldn't be surprised if, um, like a production cutter buys it, like yeah. from India or, or Hong yeah. Kong or something. Yeah, those guys buy all that stuff, especially the big chunks. And uh, is that the, that's slightly different, that's a greener Kingman yeah. maybe? No. Yeah. It looks like Alacron from Mexico. Alacron. Yeah. Is Alacron a name of a place or? Uh, name of a mine? I don't know if they call it, but there's the Alacron and Scorpion. Yeah. Oh, okay. That means, how do you say it with an accent? Alacron. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so I don't know the Scorpion there or what's going on, but yeah, we call it Alacron. Yeah, because these nice big chunks here too. Yeah, that's not good. Dang. <laughs> That's Kingman? Yeah, this is Kingman. Nice big stuff, chunks, you see? And they feel good too. Pretty pretty good, but yeah. Yeah, they're good. Oh, those are great. Where's your dad? He's going back home right now. Oh, wait, we already talked. I forgot, dude. <laughs> dude, that, that flea market was weird. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on over there. some nice number eight. Lots of classic patterns. Um, there can be floral patterns like these pieces here. I think a lot of us, yeah, when we think of number eight, oh, yeah, I think that's yeah. one of the queens of the batch for sure. Yeah. Plus, I cut some statement stones here, this tree as well. What are those? This is also great, but there's a mix of like a Hubei and all that stuff right here. I love Hubei. Yeah, there's a couple in there, not too much. Like, that's number eight, this is all number eight. Oh, man, that one. Yeah, what? See? 
it's that classic pattern that I like. Yo, for real. I love this polychrome color. I love the yellow. I actually enjoy pieces that are just straight yellow. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> see those too much because they're always sold out. Yeah. Um, I think... Right here as well. Dude, yeah, number eight everywhere. Dude, you're a busy man. Yeah, well, um, I cut my, my brother cuts, my uncle cuts. It's a family business. Yeah, but, you know, I have my section here in the booth, so... Who's the best? Be honest. No, I can Who's, better than me. Yeah, okay, you're a good guy. Me. Your sister's going to keep you honest over there. She knows. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone's better than me. Well, you're fantastic, so they must just be amazing. Yeah. Look at that. That's thousands of hours right there. Yeah, that's about half our stock, I think. And then, folks, there's trays under trays here, too. So there's, like, it's, it's just the surface. Um, again, if anyone's interested in any cabochons of any kind, not just what you see here, message Dan the Cabman on Instagram. Uh, and... Here's some contact information. You're really gonna want us to take a screenshot of this, folks. This is somebody worth knowing for sure. Uh, send them an email there. They are located in America, so they won't have a hard time uh, sending you stuff. There's no problem. A lot of people are gonna want to know: Would you ship international? Yeah, we do. Okay, because uh, some people don't want to right now. I guess there's some stuff that's changed in Germany recently. Uh, Oh, interesting. International, international. Well, that's just safer anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, and the quality is worth it. You're not, you know, this isn't Tiger's Eye. <laughs> this ain't wholesale, mass produced fluorite cabochons, you know? Yeah. Oh, cool. You're selling some Magdalena stuff. Mag. Mag, mag, not Magdalena, Magdalena? Magdalena, yeah, that's from Calisto. Uh, it's Mexico, they have a lot of uh, obsidian there as workshops. There's some cool videos on YouTube, folks, if you're ever interested, of the folks making these. And they actually use uh, angle grinders. Is that your little triangle right there? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they use a lot of different tools there. They use for, like, napping and all that stuff. They got arrowheads. No, I was wondering if it had a size. Oh. Veracruz? Yeah, Veracruz. Exactly. It's got the Veracruz look. It's a great, great amethyst. Yo, these. Off the hook. Yeah, my sister's husband, he makes these. They're tubes, and he drills them and everything. Hey, there you go. These are spectacular. Yeah, they're very nice. Really pre-Columbian style, yeah, like really good. Aztec, Mayan exactly. style. Yeah, is that pretty good? I think the man doesn't want you to know that you're you are a First Nations person, man. Huh? <laughs> the the government doesn't want you to know that uh, Mexicans are indigenous. You know, yeah. peoples. You know, and a lot of people don't think about it. Yeah, people think that only here in the U.S. <laughs> Sprouted out. Yeah. <laughs> sprouted outside of the Home Depot yeah. or something. <laughs> no, man. There's so much indigenous yeah. uh, Native American yeah, culture. Long line from indigenous people down to Mexico. Those are the yeah. scream pre Columbian yeah. style. Beautiful Maya Aztec. Her husband does a great job. He must be. What do you think? He's doing just hand by hand? No, he does it on a. On a Interesting. Yeah, he just does them each and every single one. Just flipping those things, huh? Yeah, he does good on them, too. Yeah. <clears throat> good job. Nice quality potters. There's a... Oh, cool. Like, his... Yeah, he does... Uh, his whole family does yeah, it, too? so, like, her, well, she's married to him, and they're, uh... They do... She does the selling and the jewelry. He does, like, tubing. And her son, you know, he walks around here, tries to get some customers in. Heck, yeah. yeah so everyone does their part. Everyone does their part. My dad, my uncle, my brother... And everyone knows involved. 
a lot of people to make this happen. And you guys are from here? We're from Arizona. You're from Arizona? Yeah. Okay. Well, the sign out there said local. Yeah. yeah. You have to be part of the gem club. Yes. Yeah. So they can perfect. I hear the club is so popular that people are waiting in line to use a slab saw all day long. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> so it's like just so many people doing it. That's what I've heard. Yeah, that one of the best ones. Honestly, this is one of my favorite shows. Out of all the shows we do anywhere, this is one of my favorite ones. My best one. I think. Durango's pretty cool. Yeah, the, the weather's nice. The people are friendly. It's very friendly. Yeah, it's great. Come out here. Close to everything. Oh, for sure. In the random, in the in the middle of the hills. Yeah, nice cool <laughs> weather. Relatively, you know. Extra hot. The so these are yeah. Kingman. Those are Hubei Mountain. Uh, Kingman again, Green Kingman. Um, some Marenzi actually. Some Marenzi two, I believe. Which is a, a Mexican material. I think it's Marenzi two is actually Nakazari. And then some beads there, some chips. Um, sorry to bother you. Do you have you ever seen your husband drill this? Does he do it by hand? Does he use a drill press or something? Really? Yeah, I dremel. so he does it by hand. He's just holding it, taking um, his time. Yeah, he holds it and then he just has to put the water. So if he wants to get a little bigger, he gets usually a two millimeter drill bit. Reams it. But with a four millimeter drill bit, it breaks. Yeah. So he kind of just does it. That is hard work. <laughs> Patience is key for sure. Do you think he drills it before he finishes it, or does he finish the piece no, he and? Finishes it and then he drills it and then he just gets it. Oh yeah, because that's scary. Because he probably breaks them sometimes, yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> oh cool. Is he in Mexico? Yes. Oh, because it'd be cool to meet the guy sometime. Yeah. So you should bring him to Tucson. Sometime. Oh, cool. Did he like it? Did he like the food? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of their fine jewelry. These are pretty new to the family. I believe like maybe three, four years. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, thank you. Will do. Uh, super reasonably priced. All natural metals and turquoise obviously cut by the uh, family probably a lot of these are cut by Dan or his brothers never met Dan's brothers I've known Dan for a long time oh cool nice open back some people really enjoy that and also saves on metal could you pull off the big triangle ring I can't do it <laughs> that's waiting for an Oklahoma queen right there some some casino goer. <laughs> Get this back in there nicely. Some steakhouse queen. It's a nice piece of uh, darker campitos there. This is super neat. Look at that. I love the asymmetrical design. And I guess it would kind of hang like this. Super neat. And, uh, no, oh, they got some nice Jalisco fire opals here. Some really nice jellies, and I actually like the uh, peach ones. The bracelets are stunning. I, don't, I haven't seen their bracelets. I've only seen their rings, really. Me too, Richard. I love them. How you doing, Moto? Thanks for watching, my friend. Whoa! That's a nice piece of number eight right there. Piece of Kingman right there. Hubei Mountain, Pilot Mountain, and Campitos. I think uh, the majority of the turquoise that I've cut over the years actually came from Dan's family. His dad's super good to me. Uh, I was filming a video at the Diamond Pacific booth and he gave me a nice piece of um, Baja to cut on the house. But anyway, 
you're going to want to get that information, folks. This is a lifelong dealer that you're going to want to uh, buy from in the future. They do ship international. They're located in America, so there'll be no problem with that stuff. Yo, Dan, thanks for letting me bug you, bro. And I will see you in, in Denver. I'll let you play my new guitar. $4,000, dude. It's so bad. It's so loud. <laughs> Yo, have you ever... Oh, you've seen the accordions. I got, a, I got a bunch more. I'm so addicted to accordions. I was playing in a cumbia band out of Albuquerque, but I got fired. I can't say on camera. <laughs> Yo, for real. Thank you, Dan. See you soon, my brother. And cleavers. Very cool. So this is a super smaller indoor section. Those are cool. The gentleman's polish is spectacular. Uh, his prices are super affordable. Now that is an Indian blanket jasper. Look at that. You can just tell right off the bat this gentleman is actually cutting his stones. Um, I would say, uh, are, are you using cerium? Um, your yeah. polish is spectacular. Yeah, I do cerium. You like my polish, thank you. Your polish, I love your polish, dude. Like depending on when, sometimes, there was a point where I went from 1,200 to 3,000, and I just didn't even do cerium. A lot of people do that. done. That's the majority but, of folks I decided, here. I you know, I like that. There's a little bit better shine. And the agates deserve it. The agates can take it, and they deserve it. Like turquoise, uh, some six to 3,000 zam. Yeah. But you're... I mean, if you're going to take time making these incredible designs, they deserve the cerium. Thank you for calling them incredible. Like <laughs> oh, they're great, and they're definitely underpriced. Oh, well, um, <laughs> buy two. Buy them all and charge double. Yeah, you know, I've, been, um, I've been selling a lot of my double, these are double-sided, uh, double-sided pendants. So this is a good show for you. Um, it looks like you look, work a lot of agates, in the, which are really, really hard. Yeah. Um, do you, what is your wheel setup? 80 to 20, do you go back down to like a, uh, a, a rougher? Um, my first wheel is uh, centered and it's 60. Oh, when wow. Get, when you get centered, they say get one wheel one step closer than a plated wheel. Right, because it's, the centered works a little different. Yeah. Really? You have ID? Yeah. Slim, do you have ID? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you I gave it back to you. So anyway, thank you very much. See, she bought two of my pendants. Oh, yeah. She's one of them, and she's got the other in the purse. Yep, and I got the drum. Oh, oh fantastic. Drum. You said drum? Yeah, that's a tongue drum. Oh, cool. Yeah, you ever seen those? Oh, yeah, definitely. And I got a butt drum at home. Oh, nice. My grandma's a drum maker. She doesn't make metal drums, but she makes native-style drums. What's in the case over there? What kind of guitar? Uh, it's, uh, the it's, uh, Washburn. Oh, nice. Not bad. I keep it out of the hot car. Oh, you got a, I got a, I got a Martin D18 frying in the car right now. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. I could have found somebody nice to leave it around. But anyway, um, I was going to say something. Okay. Eight, so, 60 so centered. 60. Then my next wheel is plated. It's a 220. And then I, I have a 360, but I don't use it much. Uh, so plated? Plated. And then I jump over to the, the 280, or they call it 300 um, belt, and I use it for expandos. Really? So is it diamond on your expando? Yeah, I mean, it's typical. Most people have a, they go to 280. Right? It's not silicon carbide expandable, it's diamond expandable. Yeah, it's diamond. Well, I, I read diamond my own belts. Oh, cool. Yeah, it costs me next to nothing. <laughs> oh, so wow. I go to 280, then my next one's 600, 1200, 3000, and serial. Interesting. And I read any of those, the four belts, the six, or 300, 600, 12, and 3,000, I read diamond myself. Oh, interesting. It costs about $4 for the diamond. <laughs> oh, my. Um, was it a, a pretty belt. did you mess any up getting the process down? Um, someone recommended the wrong kind of glue, and I did not, it did not work for me. They said poly, linear polyurethane. It's so dang hard, you lock your diamonds in. Mm -hmm. They don't. They're not exposed. Right. So now I just use a, a 30 minute epoxy and that wears down and, and exposes. Like the hardware epoxy. 
Hardware well, Store actually, Epoxy. No, I, I tried one called Do It Best, or no, it was, it was called Great Plains. It was a hobby hobby one, and it was it was too hard. It locked it in. The one that works is called um, Bob Smith Industries or BSI. Ah, uh, he makes uh, CA too, I believe. And you get the thirty minute epoxy by BSI. And that's the one that works. Oh, that's uh, super cool. If you go to the forum called Rock Family Hobby, there's a couple of discussions about this. That's where I learned it. That's a great forum. And I contributed my stuff to it, so. Yeah, there's the history of everyone that's tried it. You got a button there that's... Oh, uh, always, man. This shirt's probably 40 years old. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can never keep these shirts buttoned. I look like a savage. Um, is it? What is this material here? It's a moss from... So this, well, it's more than moss. Yeah, everything but. here to here is uh, Holt Canyon. Um, it's in the southwest corner of Utah. You sound something you like? Rocky Butte, okay. Cash Beautiful material. So the gentleman's using typical grits in a very untypical manner. Expandable diamond that the gentleman re resurfaces himself. That would be super cool to talk more about it, but I'd like to get away from you folks when they're shopping around. Thank you, sir, so much for chatting. Dude is really good lapidary. Uh... I definitely would love to chat with him more. Now let's take a look at some of these beads over here. From this nice gentleman from Afghanistan. These are cool. These are actually glass. Sorry that I missed out um, so much of the chat, folks. I've just been busy chatting. Any cotton candy agate, youngite. Uh, young it's really cool. I got a bunch at the house. I haven't seen any here. Sometimes they call it cave agate, and it's super UV reactive. Dude, I was so mad today. I didn't have $3 to get in here. And I'm like, what am I going to tell this guy? I need to give him a th something worth three bucks. So I came super late and then super early today. Uh, these are glass, but the graduated hishi is really nice. Hishi's kind of like the disc style. You see a lot of Hopi, Zuni, and Dene. Uh, make Hishi, this is, would, would be considered Hishi. A little bit thicker than the traditional Native Americans would use, but still really nice. Nice Kingman stabilized strands. Uh, this here, believe it or not, is tourmaline. Uh, this is smoky quartz. Nice satin finish on those. These are really cool. These uh, polished Botswana, Botswana and would it be Botswana, Botswana, Botswana agate cylindrical beads. You got a great channel, Dave. I should have had an alert. Sorry about that, Hannah. You can push the little bell icon thingy. Been super stressed out about it lately. Um, <clears throat> been working really hard for Diamond Pacific, making these videos for them. Uh, just recently, for no apparent reason, got banned on TikTok. And that kind of sketched me out. I'm like, man, what happened? Hopefully it was just a troll who was just reporting my stuff all the time. But, uh, yeah, it sketched me out. I was having fun on TikTok. Maybe too much fun. Dave, you should buy an agate pendant from that guy. I wouldn't mind buying, buying a piece. Some more smaller heishis, definitely stabilized, but it's super nice. I could not make this. Uh, it would just take too long. But it, I mean, so you gotta appreciate what it is. A gentleman in Taos, New Mexico, uh, a Diné gentleman from Albuquerque, actually told me how to make these. Ay ay ay. Thank you, everybody rocks. I'm going to report this person really quick. Excuse me. Uh, yes, yeah, so the way you would make these is... Obviously, the hardest part is drilling. Oh, thank you so much, Burning Gems, for the super chat, dude. I really appreciate you. I'll definitely get lunch. There's such better food here in Durango than where I live in Taos. I cannot thank you enough, dude. I owe you big time. You're always so good to me. You all are so good to me. Thank you so much. The, so you would drill the hole, which is the hardest part. 
Then you'd put it, this gentleman was telling me, he puts it on a guitar string, a metal like steel string, acoustic string, flexible, but also stiff. And he bends the string and holds it against the wheel and let it rotate and spin itself uh, to make those. Oh, I just drank a, just drank a big old Fiji. Got a little bit left. I'm gonna go fill it up somewhere. I try not to be picky about water, but if there's something to be picky about, maybe that's the thing. That's crazy, another great rock hound got banned on TikTok for no reason. Dude, I know, man. And they, they banned that that poor uh, kid who does all the science stuff. You need to contact TikTok, Dave. You know what, I'm just gonna let it be. I started another one, if anyone wants to follow me there, it's Labrador Dave 2 um, I just don't wanna mess with TikTok anymore. It's, it's keeping me from making quality YouTube videos like what I should be doing. Here's some more Hishi, a darker, perhaps enhanced. Uh, this actually right here, this one is not turquoise. But it's spectacular, I, I couldn't make those. This one is, these are, um, those are. But this one is a, uh, a colored, colored piece. Are you at, um, Gem Mall, Holodome in Tucson? Uh, no, to the, the, the Kino Park. Yeah. Oh, Kino. Kino. We walk in first to the right, right? I okay, I remember you. <laughs> I'm in Kino too. My grandma makes the drums. I don't know if you remember those. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. This gentleman? Oh, yeah. They're fantastic. Really good people. You're having too much fun. I always have too much fun. I gotta, gotta, gotta calm down. <laughs> I think that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, to have too much fun. Oh, on the planet, for sure. Yeah, spread the love, spread the fun, help each other out. Yeah. Make the vibe, make the pattern. Absolutely. You got it. You, you know the secret. In Seattle. Oh, in Seattle. It was just in Albuquerque. Yeah, I didn't get to go. I'm sorry. But anyway, <laughs> I didn't get to go in, but we went last night. And he Loving people is the highest honor. Loving people is the highest honor. Art. Oh, art. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's true. Definitely. Loving people is the finest art. These are cool serpentine beads. Nice uh, tapered cylinders. Are you a beater? I don't have the patience. Have you ever like finished it and then dropped it and it goes everywhere? Uh, I guess that's part of the something you got to deal with, right? <laughs> well, you get those little clamps and put on either end of the string, you know? Oh! And then that'll keep that from happening. I never even thought of that. <laughs> And it's really a good thing to get. And there's a whole bunch of That is great. Yeah. I, I don't do it anymore, but my granddaughter just did it twice. Yeah. These are cool cabs. These are actually shaped and then tumbled. But if someone would, you know, if someone's going to set this in silver, you would not mind that uh, saw mark on the back at all. You wouldn't even see it, in fact. Sorry. Lady's super kind. These are cool. These are, uh, I think, um, these are African. These are definitely African, and uh, they are glass. But they're spectacular. I love them. I have a really hard time going to African Village in Tucson. I'm just so addicted to beads. I actually got like chased out of African Village last year. Did any of you folks see my live in uh, African Village? Yo, Simi, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. I really appreciate it. I love you. Thank you so much. Once you've seen a lot of natural real tur turquoise, you can tell right away. Absolutely, that's the best like way to know. You know, you just know, I like, I can see this 
in this, in that, and I know right away it's Kingman. You just get the eye for it. Simi, I cannot thank you enough. Burning and Ricky, I cannot thank you guys enough for the super chats. Thank you so much. Hi, Dave. Uh, from Alexandria, Virginia. Simi, thank you, my friend. I'm going to have to come visit you in Virginia. They say they make the best fiddles in Virginia. That's what Hank Williams says, right? You know, it's neat. Um, oh, I want to look at the rugs, but then I'll spend too much time at the rugs. They say, uh, you know, here in America, in like the bluegrass world, a lot of people... Uh, oh, look at those bolos. That is chunky. Super nice. Would you consider that intarsia? I beg your pardon, sir. Um, excuse me, sir. Yes. Would you consider that intarsia? I can see that. What do you mean, the style? Yeah. I don't know. I dreamed it. I woke up and made. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, to to get that perfect flat edge, is it straight off your saw? Or are you using a flat lap sideways? Or? No, it's, it comes out straight off the saw flat. Then you're taking your time sawing and a good saw. Well, that's really good. That's a Sonoran Sunrise. Two, you got the sunset and the sunrise and two yeah. different stuff. You know, it's getting harder and harder to find a piece that has both. Uh, like you used to back in the day, you used to be able to find a piece with the blue and the red. Yeah. You just, might as well just put it together yourself. It actually looks better that way. <laughs> This is spectacular. Well, that one's just one stone. That's not put together. Really? Yeah, that's just. Oh, I thought. <laughs> no, I thought like that. I thought no, you totally that's, put that's that together. Just one stone. Now that you see it, I can totally tell. Yep. Oh man, that's you can't, you fantastic. Can't get sunrise anymore. Not with both. The mine got flooded in Mexico. Really? It's a copper mine, and it got flooded, and there's not enough copper in it to pump it out. They just abandoned the mine. And it's, it's not the only mine totally. in the world it come from. Fantastic. I, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, the few pieces I see floating around, like there's a gentleman in the back over there selling a piece. It's more green than blue. Uh -huh. $700 for uh, 10 pounds. Ooh. You know, it's, it's probably twice as old as me, and... You know, and he'll probably get it one day. <laughs> You're a fantastic lapidary, dude. See, there's, that, there's that one bolo tie back there that's the dark. Um, this one? Yeah, that's just one stone, too. Is it Hawaii? No, it's just, I don't know what kind of stone it is, but it's just <laughs> one stone. I, there's a lot of stones. I don't know what they are. I've just been doing this for five years. You know what? So That's the best way to do it is just focus on the art and what you like. Yeah. When you start worrying about what other people like, what you think is gonna sell, then you're bastardizing your art. Yeah. And uh, you got it going on, man. You know, I, just, uh, <laughs> I just don't know all the names, and I never will. Did you do this cobblestone? Yeah. Was it hard? I've never done it. Well, it uh, took my thumbnails off. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it came out really good. I cut them by hand. Uh, yeah. Do you stay here in Durango? Yeah. Oh, nice, very nice place. I'm in Taos. Okay. But I think I like Durango a little bit better. <laughs> this is a Sonoran Sunrise. And a friend of mine was over on port site and he was emptying barrels and dropping them on the ground. The guy said, you can do that as long as you put them back in the barrel. And we picked one up and hit another rock and a chunk fell off. And I reached out and grabbed it and said, wait a minute. I think it was a bunch of money. I said, oh shit, buddy. <laughs> you know, it broke off and I grabbed it. And look at that piece of snow and sunrise. Whoa. Pure green. On a piece of Amazonite? Yeah. Spectacular. And that going it's like palm trees and waves. That thing is a trip. It's great. We had it out yesterday and the lady came up and she said, Did you make this? And I said, Yeah, and she she handed it to me and said, Don't sell that. Keep it. Is that what you're gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> I wear it with my orange shirt. It's an heirloom yeah. piece. You know, this is fantastic. The metal is really popping. I didn't know it was metal until I really looked in the light. Yeah, it trip. It's great. There's, there's some green somewhere over here. There was one that was half red and half green. A girl just bought that. Thank you for sharing that. 
Oh yeah, very nice. Oh, I like the natural like cleavage at the bottom there. Yeah, I like doing a lot of stones that way. And this bolo tie, I was a charter boat captain in the Florida Keys, and one of my customers used to be a gold miner in uh, Breckenridge. And he found all these in the, in the 40s. Oh, that he is really cool. He found all these cool. nuggets and made, what? had this made. That's, that's nuggets? Yeah. Oh, the, that's not a bezel. That's all nuggets. That's all gold nuggets. What? And a big gold nugget at the top. Holy smokes. The and the feathers are gold. The back's gold. And, uh, and that's just bronze, or bronze, I guess, from whatever. <laughs> It's got enough gold on it. No yeah, one's gonna mind. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, my buddy gave. He said, "I, I never wear it." He said, "You have it. Just like gold." Thank you. Do you ever miss Florida? Uh, I miss fishing. But in the Keys, it is so the the traffic's around. Yeah. I was second generation fishing guy. And doing backcountry fishing. And I started there were 30, 30 fishing guys in the town I lived in. Now there's over 400. Oh man, yeah. It's... And you, go, you can get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go to your secret spot and there's already 10 boats. You know, it's just, it went to hell. The highway is only one road in and one road out. Oh and, man. You know, and it's just, the traffic jam is just horrible. Um, so a lot of this material is from Colorado. Where are you getting your material from? Uh, I go over one once a year. Well, all this stuff is from all over. The place. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this is from all over the world. You go to Quartzsite or Tucson? Quartzsite. Oh, nice. When they do the powwow, mm -hmm. me and two buddies are mine. Bye. Thank you so much. Captain Lonnie. Yeah, Captain Lonnie. <laughs> I'm actually from Fort Pierce. Oh, okay. Born and raised. Yeah, I like uh, Fort Pierce, and it's probably it's gotten better. It's been rough. <laughs> it's been a rough 20 years, but it's it's back in action. Music's playing again. Here's another Captain Lonnie original. Check that out. It's another double piece there. I got to the point where I can hardly get in and out of the boat anymore. It wears you out. Do you know Carrie? She's <laughs> my wife. I was trying to figure out. We knew we that we met you before. But... Yeah. Yeah. We visit... Oh, that's awesome, Patrick. I like Durango. Uh, I've played a few shows here. Okay. My good friend Andy from the Foggy Memory Boys used to live here. The beautiful Bandy uh, from... Ranch Dressing Co. lives here. That's cool. Look at that. So the gentleman cabbed it and then had like the natural cleavage for the top. Sometimes people flatten out calves, but this gentleman has a really good natural eye. His designs are real natural. They flow with the stone. Uh, that's really unique. Really unique. Yeah, that's Sonora Sunrise too. I love the cleavage cap. Yeah, I just left it wrong. Really you neat. You can only do that when you get an end cut. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see ya. Okay, thank you so much. He's got some earrings right here. Out of some silver tin and rotor night. Lonnie, how are you getting your holes, man? How do I get what? How do you how are you drilling your holes? Uh I got a a metal tray with a piece of plywood glued to it. And I'll put the stones in there. I got a little drill I got at uh, Rio Grande. It was like 60 bucks. Small drill, it's got a little handle on it. And I use diamond bits. And I get them from Rio Grande too. And I use uh, 1.5 millimeter or whatever. Oh. And I put the stone in there and then I, I pour water in it. And then I go down just real slow and up, real slow, real up. Is the diamond bit through. hollow? Is it a core or is it uh, solid? Some, some of them are hollow and some of them are solid. And I will drill, I buy, buy packs of I think 10 in a pack for not much at all and I'll buy 50 at a time. Oh, and wow. I'll drill six, six holes and then I'll just take the bit and throw it in the trash and get another one. <laughs> once that diamond's gone, then the stone cracks. So you're drilling with water, you're drilling by hand. Yeah. No fancy sonic drill, no... No, it's a, it's a drill, high 
Oh, nice. And a bit of patience, huh? So you're pumping, pump drilling, like a little bit in, take it out, yeah, let it clean bit, out, and out. oh man, I'm not good at that. <laughs> I use a uh, Gunther water swivel, which will drill jade as fast as butter. The machine is five hundred dollars. The bits are fifty bucks. Uh, if you mess it up, you gotta buy another fifty dollar bit. But um, if you can learn to do it your way, it's pennies per yeah, hole. My, my bits are probably a dollar <laughs> yeah. a piece. So. Oh, and man. usually you can tell when the, when the diamond's off because all of a sudden it'll, it'll come out of the stone black. Oh, because yeah. it's the metal. The minute it's black, get it out of there. That's the, the metal turning the water black, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, super interesting. Yeah. Nice little display here of how he goes about it. Rough rock. Slabbed, trimmed, capped. Yep. Um, are you? I did, the, I did the slabs at the at the rock club. Mm -hmm. uh, they got they got three slabbing machines, and then I've got everything else at home. I hear that the Durango Club is really Cap good. Oh, nice. Yeah, so Cap King's a great machine. I used to actually uh, used to work for Cap King. Oh, okay. I used to do customer service. Okay, I love the machine. And. Uh, you know, a lot of people like it, but nobody calls to tell you how much they love something. No. They call it to cuss you out. Oh. <laughs> and so I would sit on the phone for hours helping people. Um, they just they sponsored my YouTube channel. And then the, the old vice president stepped down and I'm no longer sponsored by them. We're actually sponsored by Diamond Pacific now, which is like psh, fantastic. Hello. Captain Lonnie, it was such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, sir. Hey, what's your name? I'm David. Hey, David. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Call me Cap. Yes, sir. Right. See you soon, Captain. Captain Lonnie. Yeah, I feel bad for a second. I gave him a limp handshake. I had to go back in and give him another handshake. I don't be giving people limp handshakes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was that indoor section. Let me read some of these. Any tips? Uh, what is an all around best functional lapidary equipment for cutting and smoothing? Ooh, that's such a tough question. It depends. Are you on a budget? If you're on a budget, um, I have videos on my YouTube channel here on how to turn a drill press into a functional lapidary machine. If you're not on a budget, I would highly suggest Diamond Pacific. They make the best wheels in the world. The Genies are really great. That's what I use. Uh, not just because I'm sponsored by the company, but it's just fantastic. Let's go in the sun a little bit. Uh, can't be in here too long because it will crash the video. But if we stand over here, out of the sun, maybe it won't crash. So these folks are really cool from Mexico. You can actually find this vendor at the Miners Co-op in Tucson. If you folks ever go to that, that's a really cool composite piece right there. I tried to film here yesterday, early in the morning, and the video crashed because the, the camera got too hot. Some nice aguas calientes, fire agate. Um, unfortunately, folks, if you want me to keep filming, I have to get out of the sun. But uh, this gentleman here hand cut this. Really affordable. Um, no offense to the Jim Gray, but this is a lot more affordable than the Jim Gray stuff. Uh, gentleman around the corner over here and the green actually cut and hand polish this he said he was a ma he did masonry work for years so the techniques kind of transferred over captain's cool ain't he he doesn't seem to have a website no i don't think captain would have a website he's an old timer how you doing my friend came back to look at show people your your beautiful piece because the video crashed yesterday yeah. from the sun uh do you still have that pamphlet yeah this dude's cool Oh, thank you. I'm going to share it with folks, if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. And uh, so I was telling people, you you actually got into it. You, you had the techniques from being a mason for yes. years. Yes. And it makes a lot of sense. You, you're practically doing the same thing. You, um, you know, same thing with polishes, removing scratches, replacing them with scratches. But uh, 
How did you get into the wood? Is it just where you were? No, what happened is actually I had to go out to Arizona to pick up some uh, stone for a project I was losing my butt on. And I was driving through Petrified Forest and I talked to a couple people there and I'm like, well, if I could buy a couple logs, I can kind of finish them and make my money in the long run. And I found somebody that owns a ranch you know, by talking to a couple people and they're like, go well, talk to this lady, she'll sell you logs. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Gobel Ranch. The Gobel Ranch, we bought a couple logs. She's like, got into it you know you ryan yep i'm sorry i don't think i even introduced myself yesterday dude i was shaking like oh, a leaf dude, good, dude. Was <laughs> david nice to meet you dave um did you cut that from the log yeah. wow yeah i got 10 slabs out of that log um, that log weighed about three thousand pounds it's almost looking opalized on those yeah. edges there are you going to these uh they're right yeah 3250 and uh money walks Wait, people yep. talk, money walks. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Fantastic. It's even got a cell that kind of looks like a dino cell. Where is it right there? <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's kind of crazy. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. The more you look at them, the more that they tell you. Oh, for sure, dude. You're great. Um, What do you think she weighs? It's about 100 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, no problem, brother. Yeah. Check out Ryan. Um... Yeah, check out his website right there. And check out the rose quartz too over here. Oh, yeah. I'd love to look at it. Stonefallsco.com. Make sure to check that out, folks. Whoa. It's like hematoidal or something, huh? Yeah. Let me get over there. Hello, doggy. Is this yep, your dog? That's Milo. <laughs> hey, Milo. Whoa, that is nice. This is the kind of stuff that sells your one bedroom, one bath, million dollar house in Durango, huh? <laughs> Decor is booming in the lapidary world, I think. Thank you, Milo, for the kisses. That is great. The polish is great. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Again, uh, Ryan Naples, stonefallsco.com. Check him out. Super cool cat. Um, will you be at any other shows this year? Yeah, I'll be over at Denver. I'll be at BB. I pretty much go everywhere. I work with a lot of the bigger guys, like Bookbinder Crystals. Nice. Yeah, so I kind of talk team with everybody else because it comes back to you know how it is with the shows. It's like everyone's got to tell you like what's supposed to do. Kind of yeah. So it's like, what do I do? Because you could do you could do a show every weekend. Yeah. And yeah, not all of them will work for you. Exactly. Yeah, I did uh, the jog show this year. Just, oh it's yeah. Shit, because I'm not. Doing right. Outdoor, you know what I mean? Where like, like I had a waterfall made out of petrified wood. People were loving it, but that's not what they're there for. You know where I mean? like um perhaps. Kino. Kino or 22nd maybe yeah maybe or maybe even Miners Co-op probably yeah. Yeah. Uh, just outside of Tucson would have been really well, good actually what I ended up doing is I did the, jo the jogs and then uh, you know uh, Isaac Jones I don't uh, Fire Dragon who's up at the Miners Co-op uh, Morgan Jones I think so is he a uh, hippie He's gentleman a yeah okay tall, yeah yeah, yeah I know boy. <laughs> oh, dang. He calls me up and he's like, hey, man, we're barbecuing. And I'm like, dude, I'm almost out of gas. I don't know if I can make it up. He's like, well, why don't you come pick up this three rack? So I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I sold the slab. I was like, oh, man. You know how it is. That is great. Yo, heck yeah. And I'm setting up a big dancing song. Oh, nice. So if you ever find big stuff, you want to Oh, absolutely. Um, could people ever reach out to you on your email and mail you material to slap, perhaps? I think the industry standard, some people do a dollar square inch and some it's yeah. everybody's yeah, different well, it kind of depends, like, if it's worth it to do it yeah you can tell me going to send you like <laughs> right and that's what's worth <laughs> sending to get cut <laughs> you're not going to split a bunch of tumbles for somebody <laughs> um i was going to say buena vista you said you're going to be in buena vista yeah. i'll see you there man yeah, sure. that's a cool show yeah i used to find really cheap equipment there but now just because it's like a renaissance for lapidary 
like a four wheel machine is going for like five hundred dollars a use. I used to get them for forty bucks. Oh, yeah. I used to trade marijuana for back in the day. Well, that's you my buddy. We were talking about it because he's getting into the after and he's like, dude, I think I'm cheap. I'm like, you know, you're, I'd say trade-wise, you're going to start looking around old-timers. That's it. You yep. Know I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I used to get them next to nothing. And then those days are done. Oh, yeah. Done, done, done. That must be your knife. No. That's Roman's. It's a, Swed- <laughs> it's a Swedish knife, right? I think so. I think it's a play knife. He just picked it up over there. Oh, at, uh, Finland. That's a swap meat. Yo. Is that yours? No, that's uh, Edgar's. That amylite's beautiful. That is nice. Nice piece of amylite here. I believe it's from Canada. Oh, the sun is gone. That's nice. Yeah, cool. Those things are too damn hot. For me to grab a wood. You can fry an egg on your wood yeah, right now, dude. dude. <laughs> you can make breakfast bacon and eggs. Really cool stuff. I think it's from Alberta. Is that where that's from? Yeah, what's kind of crazy about this rose quartz too is the veins that they have, like four rows of rubble rock, and I found a black tree really damaged. Really? Yeah. Holy, did you, did it get cut corn? No, it was just right. Just what? Yeah. I just had somebody steal it from me. You know how it goes. Oh, but. yeah, 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 yeah. Man, this is fantastic. Oh, thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Dude, you're the best, dude. Heck yeah. I'll yeah. see you in Buena Vista. Sure, and it'll be we'll wandering around. Yeah. Heck yeah, brother. How you doing, my man? Gotta go find some water. But, uh, yeah, got yelled at by a dude over there yesterday. Only got yelled at once. It's a pretty good show. We're gonna take advantage of the sun being gone and take a look at some rough that I didn't get to film yesterday. Looks like, uh, this is that one cloud keeping it from burning down. But um, these gentlemen are at the Miners Co-op in Tucson, if anyone's interested in checking out this kind of stuff. A lot of these minerals are from Mexico. There's Aguas Calientes Fire Agate over there, some Jalisco um, Fire Opals. You know what I'm telling people? You gotta sell Tabasco geodes uncut. Not Yeah, but don't cut them. Sell them raw. For the same price as the cut, and you'll sell out. Because people want to cut them live on the internet and sell them, you know? Show it, yeah. yeah. But I've never seen them uncut for sale. I've seen them If you ever find a batch, you to got to get them. I sell them to gentlemen. The Tabasco geodes, the little tiny baby geodes uh, from Tabasco, Mexico. You only see them cut and polished. If anyone could get... Tabasco geodes uncut that would be super lucrative to somebody because they could do live shows well, you spend five bucks and we cut your little geode for you for another dollar we'll polish them it'll take two seconds to polish um, the Guzman family that I'm selling their fire agate for actually can get uncut Tabasco geodes so the sun's out so we gotta work fast Royal Imperial Jasper this is from uh, Jalisco Zacatecas area where my family's from this is uh, from Oregon, actually. Not all Mexican material here. They call this Oregon Agate. Kind of a bland name, but I guess before there was, you know, whoever uh, names it first wins, right? There's some shatakite there. Actually, shatakite's a mineral that grows inside of this chrysocolla, and it's kind of just a trade name. But it's like a needle fibrous material. It's not what's coloring it blue, it is a copper ore. Here's some Sonoran Sunrise from Sonora, Mexico. This material is getting really hard to find. Back in the day, you used to get slabs for a dollar. Now this is going for like $65 to $120 a pound. These are Chihuahua geodes. These from Chihuahua. I don't think you'd want to play name that rock game with Dave. I'm not actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't win all the time. And actually I like being wrong on camera. You know, Petoskis, five dollars each. That's not bad. These are really cool. I've been meaning for the last like five years to make a video on polishing these by hand, but there's just so many other people making better videos of it that I haven't done it. I gotta stop doing like I gotta stop not making videos because someone else is making a better one. Do these come in big boy sizes? Um, some of them. Are, <laughs> yeah, two nice. the biggest size I have is a 
Uh, yeah. Um, do you take a card? Um, Zelle, Venmo, or cash. Okay, thank you so much. Do you think there's an ATM here? Across the street there's one. Oh, cool. Thank you so much. Yep. Oh, nice cabochons. These must be old. They are. They're calibrated. Yep. So you know they're old. <laughs> they're for production jewelry. They're fantastic. I, I, you couldn't, there's no amount of money to, I, to where I could do that. Like, I just can't. I don't have the skill to calibrate cabs like that. And uh, they don't really sell, at least not in America, the du duplicators and calibrators like they do in Hong Kong and stuff and Shenzhen. Uh, there used to be one that was for sale. I think it was from the Graves Company. And it would, it was an arm that would spin a cab that you glued to a dop against a wheel with no grit. And then that had an other side of the arm that would spin against a wheel that did have grit. And that's so odd to me. <laughs> but you just, they don't make them anymore and you can't find them anywhere. These are cool. These are probably older than me. How old are you? I'm 30. <laughs> they probably are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. This is a s hematite or silicon. So it's they're hematite. Yeah, you can tell. It's the weight. <laughs> and, and they're 30 year old prices, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, in all honesty, I would probably charge a little bit more for one of these if I made it. <laughs> Dude, fantastic. Anyway, I will be back with right. cash for that shirt. <laughs> if you have, Which one are you looking at? I like the Amalite. The Ammonite. Was right. that an Ammonite? What is it? It's, it's, a, a, it's an Ammonite. Um, I want to make sure I have the size for you. If not, I'll get something else. Okay. I just. um. I like to wear gem shirts mm -hmm. in Tucson and Denver because mm -hmm. then people know I'm in a rock. So like, I film for a YouTube channel where I educate people on right. gems and stuff. And uh, Are you filming right now? Yes. Hi, we're Silver <laughs> Station here in Durango. Heck yeah. Thanks for visiting us. Thank you. Um, thank you for your kindness. But I like to wear the shirts because it takes the edge off. People, I get yelled at all the time. All the time. Um, and there's tons of reasons, you know. We can go on for hours about it. Well, we just put together two um, of the Crystal System shirts, so that's pretty good. Can you talk about it a little bit? Well, the... That's the, like... The Trigonal. Uh, this is this is Rotocrosite. There's seven Crystal Systems, and, and so... But this one being Rotocrosite-based colored shirt with variations of your pinks and, and dark pink. And then we've got one that's the hexagonal, which is uh, emerald, would be one of the prominent crystals. Emerald and, um, oh, it's well, <laughs> the barrel families. So, working with a, a nice heather green with a, a nice bright morning color. That's awesome. Um, do you have a card where folks might be able to reach out to you and buy a couple of those? And would you sell if somebody called and wanted one? Yeah, we just have to charge shipping. Oh, of course. Well, they're really affordable. What are they, $15? Yeah. That's too cheap. <laughs> family prices for the family show. $40 in Tucson. <laughs> well, we are producers. Check them out, folks. Silver Station, Bob Wood, and family. Here, a native Durangatan. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's a magnet. Yeah, thank you. That is fantastic. Uh, thank you, Bob. Yeah, and then, you know, we got into this. What we do for a living is do in front of the but. Um, we started off with the array of awesome shirts. Oh, nice. So the Megalodon. I always, everybody loves the Ammonite. So we put together a nice collection of And of course, try the light. Num number one seller right there. Heck yeah. It's like an alien creature. Yeah. Or maybe we're the alien creatures. And then the Diplomist is for part of the Green River Formation uh, fish family. Yo. Um, will you be at Buena Vista or um, maybe Denver? Oh, cool. Well, it's so close to home. and What you should do is you should have somebody sell your shirts for you in Tucson. Maybe Kino. I think the Kino show, somebody vending there, we'd kill it. It's a family show. Um, 
slightly higher price point, but it's still family. Mm-hmm. Unlike where, let's say, 22nd Street's a little bit more business. But uh, anyway, Bob, I can't thank you enough for your kindness, my friend. All right. Silver Station. Yes. <laughs> thank you, brother. All right. Take care. <laughs> Will do. That was super kind. Uh, you know, I'm going to totally just make a video talking about why people don't want to be filmed. A lot of people do make sales off of just me filming and sharing their card and stuff, but a lot of people just do not like it. And it could be, for instance, if it's a high-end piece, um, somebody overseas can just watch my video, and I know what happens. I, I experienced it, somebody watching my video, getting their piece duplicated from my video. Um, some, you know, if it's a high-end mineral that goes for tens of thousands of dollars, I can't explain to you why it's so expensive. And... Um, I'm misrepresenting the material at that point. These are cool thunder eggs. I uh, wonder where these are from. I don't think they're Californian. They almost look like potato patch. Yo, thank you, Mount Ant. I'm just now noticing that. Thank you for the super chat, my friend. I really appreciate you. Chihuahua, Mexico. I have a big rock of this at home. I gotta go get my fluorite that I bought from that guy. I'm gonna give that thing away. But, uh... Thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. I really appreciate you. I have an Oregon Thunder Egg. Oh, those are probably from Oregon, actually. Uh, rock shirts are awesome. Yeah, I, I was gonna tell the guy, but I kind of didn't get into it. I like to wear, like, fossil shirts and dinosaur shirts at the Tucson show because it kind of it's kind of nerdy and it uh people will get less upset when I'm going around filming and stuff if I'm wearing like a dinosaur shirt I look like a nerd which is the point hey my friend uh do you mind if I grab that from you yeah let's do it <laughs> thank you brother right how much it was just a ten dollar piece right mm-hmm. cool yeah. awesome I forget, did you pay me? I did, my friend. Two go. fives. I got it on fa- camera. Oh, dude, no Smart man. <laughs> no, Bro, David. David? Mm-hmm. Uh, what was your... Lapidary name? Dave. Lap- dude. Check it out. Oh, yeah, dude. I've been, yeah, I've been working my butt off. But um, if anybody was interested in any of your super affordable florets and stuff, yeah. could they contact you? Absolutely. Did I? Did you get a little card with the? I might have, my friend, and no, I, it just, wasn't one of those though. Just take that because it has my. Do you have Instagram? Uh, I do. Okay, so that's my gem Instagram account. People buy them through there for me all the time. At Godzilla with an one yep. underscore gems. If anyone's interested in this dude's way too affordable hand harvested materials, buy them out. Just buy them out. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, if, for those of you who weren't here, about an hour and a half ago, I bought a piece of fluorite from him. It was just, it was, it was $10, it was just way too cheap. Look at that, huge, beautiful specimen for 20 bucks. These are Lincoln County, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're so dark that if someone wasn't familiar with Lincoln, they'd probably think it was an irradiated in Arkansas. Yeah. But it's not, it's 100% natural from Mother Earth. Um, super nice. Yeah. What kind of oh, scissors are those? They look good. Oh, oh Cutco. Cut co, oh, dude, did you used yeah. to work for those guys or something? For like a week. <laughs> These were given to me as a joke because a friend of mine worked there too. And you're like, wait, you worked there when you were 18 too? <laughs> she gave me these. She's like, look, I got an old pair. Yeah, I don't even think I sold any. Not even to your grandparents? I felt too bad. Oh, I hear you. My neighbors were going to buy, my rich, looking back, I'm like, God, why was I so nice? Like, they were going to buy, like, 6,000 in knives, and I remember thinking, I don't want to scam you guys. Like, you're, like, my second family. And, like, looking back, now I understand how wealthy they are. I'm like, they just wanted to hook me up, but... (laughs) Yeah, I have... (laughs) You do laugh at areas. Yeah. Have you been to Cortland, Arizona? No, Cortland? Cortland. So Never. It's next to Bisbee. It uh, once produced tons of high-quality turquoise and is again. And I get to go there and pick through all these copper trace minerals. Um, and so, I can smell them from here. Yeah, they're, I know. Right? It smells good to me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's, I, you know, a lot of people don't know, like, 
Because the cola has a smell. Yeah. It's a particular, it almost smells like artificial fruit flavoring. Yeah. You ever smelled Crystal Cola before? Yeah. I was going to say, come get a whiff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, so. Like anyway, Fruit Loops or something. You might want to go down there one day even. Um, oh, I'm sorry, digging through your box. I didn't. Oh, no, you can all, all you want, bro. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You can even have a little piece if you want to. Dude, thanks, man. I'll cut it and I'll let everybody know. really good. Um, here, maybe take this piece. Dude, are you sure? Yeah. Thanks, man. Really, really good cabs. We'll do a giveaway in order for them to win it. They have to follow you on Instagram. Yeah, dude, that'd be awesome. Yeah, feel free to uh, hit me up on there. Is, what's your Instagram name? The same as the YouTube channel, Lapidary okay. Dave. Lapidary Dave. Mm -hmm. okay. How's it going, guys? Awesome. Super cool material. And I like that you're doing it yourself. You know, there's a lot of resell out there where there's no passion behind it. These are yeah. your these are your babies. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I know, just people buying, reselling, blood diamond style shit. <laughs> Kids dug it up. Oh, man. Cut it and let me know. We'll do everybody rocks in order to win it. We'll do, um, you have to follow the gentleman on Instagram. And again, it was Godzilla with a one underscore gems with an S. We'll get a little picture of his card really quick. Oh, let's take a look at this. Oh, this right here. Fantastic material, especially those Lincoln County crystals. Check him out on Instagram. Go ahead and follow him. Leave the chat right now. Go check him out and come back. I see that there's 170 of you folks here in the chat and only 94 likes. Make sure to like it, this video that you're watching right now, before you go and uh, follow this gentleman on Instagram. I don't think... Oh, you do? Sweet. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah, snag a sticker. Heck yeah. Super cool guy. Look at this. How did I miss this earlier? I'm going to lift yeah. this. Are you Nicholas? Yeah. Dude, pleasure, man. Yeah, Dave. <laughs> yeah. No, you're killing it, you're dude. Yeah, you got to... I need to be more engaged on my thing. You know why? Because you, you're doing 51% of being there. All of this is passion. Yeah. Where a lot of stuff is just no connection. It's just yeah. money to them. Yeah, it's just like a weird sales thing. I always think about that. I'm like, what a strange thing to get into. <clears throat> they have to come up with something to talk about. Where you can literally just tell the story. Yeah. So you're already there, dude. You have to do it, Nick. Yeah. Yep. You're right. Is this yours? No, I wish. <laughs> I thought about selling it all day. <laughs> yeah. Like a bunch of people like, bro, is this yours? Call it. No, unfortunately not. Nice kachina. Uh, Almost looks like a totem, but it's yeah, not. Yeah. I was going to say, I wonder if the artist was Hopi or... Def Alpha. Oh. It Hopi, Dene, or yeah. Zuni. For sure, yeah. it's got to be Hopi. Nice Pueblo scene yeah. down there. Mesa Verde Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, but how long have you lived in Taos? Like ten years. Sick. Dude. I was uh, playing in a big Irish band and got kicked off tour with some friends, and we're like, oh, I don't want to go home. Yeah. It's back to Florida, so we're like, well, I'll go live with my grandma. Oh. And then got into the gem world. My grandpa used to pay me and reefer to cut cabs for him and cool. that's how I got in the scene and then this is like my second home. really yeah hit yeah. me up man anytime you're there let's go rock hunting sure there's a um, really cool hematite capped fluorite from there yep um obviously the starlights do you know about the emerald no oh dude is it my friend found a now worldwide famous emerald deposit is it green it's in Dixon okay it's so yeah, it's, it's no, it's that makes sense because there's a pegmatite mine over there. Yeah, yep. Is it near that pegmatite mine? It is. Oh, but it's yeah. not part of the pegmatite mine, no. obviously, if he's, if he's talking yeah. about it. It took years, <laughs> so we found it on the surface. It took years for him to find the pockets, and it's extremely hard to get. I have a fat cow emerald, bro. We wow. Cow emerald. It's so rare that it's whatever you want for it. Yeah. Like material. It's, it's price. The stuff that people like geologists are shitting their pants over because they know how rare and significant it is that, you know, good quality emerald is coming out of uh, 
northern New Mexico. Dude, send me a picture if you can. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Please. I'll tag you as an account and you can look at a bunch of it. I'd love to see it because um, um, I know there's great stuff around there because of the pegmatite mine, but I really don't know and I completely understand, but a lot of Taos is uh, super secretive. Is this you? Uh, yeah. Sick, my right? gram game is weak, but my YouTube hand is strong. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I bet. I just got banned on TikTok yesterday. <laughs> it hurt my feelings. This is me. So you recognize it when you look it up. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do you mind if I show the folks? The Godzilla One Gems. Check him out. Follow him. Uh, looks like he's got nice, cool art, and he seems to be a badass snowboarder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shredding. Those crystals, though, in big videos. <laughs> Yeah, bro, the, have you seen the star lights down there? Oh, yeah. That's kind of... I sold a big plate of those yesterday. Really? But then the other sweet thing that's nearby there is the, the and the... I've heard about those, and I hear it's a bit of a hike. And my friends are like, David, no offense, you're too fat. You're not going to make it. You <laughs> Thank you, no, man. I like that. <laughs> you, they're just afraid that because they know you'll find the fucking thing. Oh, man. Dude, Nick, you're awesome, man. Yeah, Dave, man. Thank you. We'll Hit me up. Oh, whatever. <laughs> the, uh, the cantina or something. Oh, for sure. I love Heck that yeah. Place. Yo, yeah. I'm going there since like the day I turned 21. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in trouble there so many times. You know, me too. You know where I like <laughs> is um, Taos. I feel like I wish there was better food, but there's little things I like. I 100% agree yeah, about the food. I, I, it's a I bit like of a food Maria's. desert. The, uh, Which know, one? Maria's food truck. Oh, right. Her, um, the, it's on the other side of town or something? Yeah, there's this one burrito with the fried pork crispies. That's good. <laughs> and then I love the Taos cow, bro. Oh, it closed. So, it's, it's a cart now. Yeah. They closed that building down. But yeah. they bought a building. And dude, check it. They're going to do shows at their building? It's really weird. They're going to have live music at the Taos cow? Crazy. That's weird. Yeah. Just focus is. on the ice cream and the sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> Not everything in Taos has to have music. <laughs> Dude, I'll see you there, brother. Yeah, later, dude. dude, thanks, Nick. To Pleasure to meet you. Make sure to go and uh, follow Nick on Instagram. That is Godzilla with a one underscore gems with an S. Oh, really cool guy. Don't forget to like the video. Yeah, thank you for liking. Really appreciate it. Great work, Dave. Keep it up and get some water. Yeah, I do need some water. Uh, I'm dry. Some, what's going on? There's something going on today. Oh, there's a, like a rock, a bead store here I wanted to go look at and try to film or something. <laughs> uh, but no time. No time. Is this no time? I beg your pardon, ma'am. Isn't there like a water filling thing around here? Yeah, they're walking around pushing a cart with mm -hmm. big barrels on it. One's a big orange five-gallon barrel and a white one. Water um, but since I'm not a vendor, is, will they still give me water? Wait, you're not water. Oh, I'm not. I'm not drinking that. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I'll be, that, thank you our, kindly. That's where our water's coming I, from. I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to be rude. How you doing, Mr. Armando? How are you doing, Rockstar? Look at this man. Armando uh, Custom Rock Cutters? Armando Custom Rock Cutters, some of the best in the industry, dude. This kid, this kid is gonna, they're gonna, he's gonna have an, his own MTV TV show sometime. <laughs> They'll be called Armando of Love. <laughs> Take it easy, brother. And anyway, anyway, this is where we filmed yesterday. I'm just gonna walk around a little tiny bit. Does Durango still have brick oven pizza? I don't know. I don't know. I really do not know. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Yeah, thank you about that. Sorry I missed so many of your comments. And uh, Virgin Valley. Were you folks at the Stoddard Well Show in California? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? Those are stunning. The This is Virgin Valley right there, right? And that's from uh, near Barstow? No. No, this is up uh, way north of uh, Reno, like the northwest corner of the battle. Oh, wow. It's spectacular. Um, does it have to be stabilized? I can't really stabilize it. These are in water because 
because they tend to crack when they dry out. And so when you find these, they just go right back into the Oh, is that a Virgin Valley? Holy smokes. I would have thought that was Ethiopian. It was so colorful and so big. Do you mind if I hold it? Oh, my. Nice price. Nice huge piece. This is heirloom. It's going to be on the Antiques Roadshow one day. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's so big and so nice. I would have thought it was Ethiopian. That is incredible. And Virgin Valley Opal is wood, right? Yeah. And so sometimes when you find it in the wood like these... Then you can dry them and cut them. Whoa. You can even see some wood patterning. Oh, yeah. The grain is right there. Oh, man. Cool, that is incredible. Huh? Incredible. Dude, you are awesome. Do you have a card by chance? Yeah. Right here. Now, there were some local mines near the town of Mojave in California, up in the Red Rock, El Paso Mountains, right there. Anything decent? <clears throat> they were always tiny. Mm. That's uh. These are from the Noak mine in California. Oh my! I dug these in 1987. This is what got what? started. I would have thought these were Mexican. <laughs> Those are what got me started with opal. It's just nobody really thinks that much about American opal. Like there's stuff in Louisiana. Uh, really? Can I trouble you to see it, man? Before we go, I'm gonna hand that to you. <laughs> Um, I've only heard about this. I've never seen it and I hear it's really rare whenever it's not not producing anymore. Really affordable for what it is. I think to the untrained eye someone might even think like almost Andamooka like. It looks similar to Andamooka. I mean here's a piece of Andamooka, you know, it kinda looks similar. Oh man, you're living that American opal dream. <laughs> How long have you been cutting and mining opals? Oh, nice. So you've seen a whole flip in the industry, like um, especially since the Outback Opal Hunters TV show and stuff and just the price skyrocket. Would you say, was it good for business or bad for business? Okay, that's good to know. kind of made all our opals that are sitting in our safe worth more. Absolutely. Um, Indonesian, that's another wood, right? It is. Yeah, some of these you can just see the little knot coming off of that. Oh, right yeah. Do you mind if I hold that? Oh, thank you, my friend. Um, if anybody wanted to contact you, would you ever consider selling on, over the phone or online? Yeah, we shouldn't have open with us. That's yeah, well, I sell online now. So, our Etsy store is here. We had her here yesterday. Sandy and Trudy Craig. How would you pronounce it, Craig? Uh, check them out on Etsy. The Etsy shop is uh, Orca Gems. Check them out. Stunning opals. And, um, you know, at the Tucson show, you really see people just specializing in Australian or Mexican. And you have uh, some, some stuff you might never see. <laughs> um, is this from Jalisco? Is this Leopards, the same place as... Uh, well, this is from uh, somewhere in Mexico. Do you think is it different than the uh, Jaliscos? Oh, you think? Yeah. Uh, These, uh, yeah, it's a, a different. They're little opals in basalt, so it's a different. Yeah, completely uh, different. Rhyolite, so it's a different. You know. Huh? I did not know they were smoke Mexicans. Yeah, they take the hydrophane ones. You know, they're, they're similar to Ethiopians, so they're white when they come out. And they smoke and then they garden them out. Definitely. Uh, I'm not someone who's opposed to a smoked opal. And smoked opals tend to be a little bit more affordable than yeah. the natural black. <laughs> I got because they're weird, you know. Dude, that is so cool. You have spectacular taste. And a mooka right there. Really affordable and a mooka. Check out Sunny Gem Stones. He cuts a, a, a lot of that. He could tell you a lot more about it than I can. Oh, look at that jar right there. These are um, these are Lightning Ridge, I believe. Cooper Petey. Uh, Kuroit Boulder. That one right there. No, thank you, Mark. I appreciate you watching. You guys need to check out Orca. 
gems. Someone needs to buy that uh, Louisiana because that stuff is great. That's really cool. I think it's... Uh, uh, so I have a video coming out with Smart Opals that was filmed in the 20 Second Street show. I don't know why I haven't gotten out yet. But um, it'll be pretty much a talk about the Ray Foster um, machine for cutting boulder opal. It's used by the top 12 Australian opal cutters, and it's pretty much a mini bull wheel for opal, and it lets you contour carve opal uh, using two grits and then a polish. Look at that. Wow. Take one of those home if somebody else would buy it. Oh, you deserve it. Thank you. If I bought it for you, I'd have, you'd have to take me to the movies, though. You have to wine and dine me afterwards. <laughs> Twelve hundred. That's <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You picking out some um, Australian? Oh, heck yeah, they're going to love it. It's just to imagine it coming from so far away. Do they sell rough in bulk? I would, I would say they do. Message them and find out yourself. Um, Sandy Craig at orcagems.com. Check them out on Etsy. I do you believe you can message directly on Etsy? All kinds of stuff. They're really cool. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, folks. There's a lot of folks in the opal industry who are as who are not as kind as these nice orca people, and it's just because it's such an expensive material. Some people don't want people knowing that they're driving down the street with, you know, five million dollars worth of stones. Some people don't want you filming their stones because you're misrepresenting uh, the product. And um, you can't, you know, explain it. But that's gonna be a whole video. There's Robert, that dude's bad to the bone. Him and Armando, hands down the best cutters. Uh, what we didn't get to look at yesterday was their jewelry. I was a little faint. How you doing, Mr. Armando? <laughs> I was a little faint, but in the beginning of yesterday's video, I, I touched down on this, but I wanted to come over here and look at them. I spent a little more time on them because they're new to the Armando family. Uh, they're extremely affordable. I hope my grandma's not watching. She'll make me buy it. <laughs> but really affordable. And um, they are made by the Armando family. Armando's brother actually makes these, right? How you doing, movie star? Look at this handsome man. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen the Armando and Sons videos I put out, check them out at the Denver and the Tucson show. It's such a pleasure to see them here at the Buena Vista. Uh, really unique designs. This one's cool. Uh, some of them, like the cuffs over here, are kind of pre-Columbian looking. A little bit of Maya, Aztec influence. Uh, I really like that they're not just like, they're not a ripoff of Native American styles and you know that they're all hand cut stones from the Armando family. Uh, I'll give you the Etsy again here in a second. Give me one second. Yeah, these are new to the Armando family. All the jewelry and uh, Junior's wire wraps, which we'll take a look at here in a second. Uh, the gentleman who is teaching you how to do it, really good. I think probably some of the best wire wraps I saw in Tucson. Yeah, I and mean, the stuff you have is just spectacular. Looks like rutile. It is rutile, but I think people would, some people would call it um, tourmalated. Tourmalinated would be uh, with, black, with tourmaline. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's the, uh, is that yeah. that term? I think yeah. it is. So it's tourmalinated. Yeah, I was saying uh, some people might call it rutile, but I think some people would call it tourmalinated. Usually, yeah, titanium with the rutile. Heck yeah. But yeah, who knows? We're all a bunch of stoners. You know? Yo, dude. I bumped into you in Tucson like six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he, I was doing a video and he, oh man, it was so funny. 
It's good to see that guy. Is he working for you? Is he working for you? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's made out of fun. Wow. Holy smokes. Uh, so, in Tucson this year, we chatted a bit about this really rare material here. But I didn't see these blues. I'm not going to take it out of the case, but look at those bubbly blues. What is that? Um, this whole tray is really rare stuff. I'm going to try to get that cab back in the frame. There we go. These are some Agua Nueva. Uh, only $220. This is something you would see easily go for 400, 500 bucks in Santa Fe. Anyway, folks, make sure to check them out at um, the Denver show for sure. Uh, and in Tucson at the Kino Electric Sports Complex. Check out my video on Armando and sends all the contact information and some better footage is on those dedicated videos. I actually don't, I try not to film when they have customers because the camera can scare people away. So that's why we're not checking out the jewelry still. But these are the Tabasco geodes I was talking about earlier. Whoever can get these rough is going to have a product that everybody's going to want. Lot, people who do live shows can cut those live and uh, slice them and cab them in maybe two, three seconds. Not that's a joke. Like that's an exaggeration. A minute, sixty seconds to polish these, and so it's kind of like a live gambling game. They buy the raw Tabasco geode, you cut it live on video for five, six, seven bucks. You polish it for another dollar. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Really cool. Love them. And uh, here's some of the, some of Junior's product. Oh, it's family product. But uh, they're all just really, really nicely done. This isn't your typical wire wrapped pirate jewelry. <laughs> what we call the bad wraps. Crappy wraps, right? Sna snappy wraps, because they're fast crappy wraps when they're bad really affordable got some seraphonite here a lot of people consider this green charite but it actually isn't i do believe it's from a uh, soviet country but yeah it's russian oh. mickey mouse yo i saw that i saw that tiktok yesterday and uh I didn't comment on it. <laughs> that is funny. Like his little Mickey. <laughs> but yeah, some people think the seraphonite is a green version of the charite, but it's not. It's a different material altogether. Uh, when you see it in the rough, you can really tell. Whoa, nice amylite. The backs are really nicely done. <laughs> $10 sold. Sold. Yeah, right. I wish. <laughs> no, even 160 is a great price. That's really affordable for a beautiful piece of Alberta. But uh, <laughs> here you go, my friend. Yeah, right. Ten dollars. So Armando Custom Rockers on Instagram and TikTok. Armando and Sons, but on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, we're Armando Custom Rockers. And um, they have so much stuff. It's better, in my opinion, if they call you and say, hey, do you have any chrysoprase? Instead of, like, trying to, having you send them what you have, you just have too much stuff to show everything. Oh, yeah. So you, you can call them and say, hey, do you have any gem silica? Do you have any rhodochrosite? They have everything in the industry. So call, let them know when you hit them up on TikTok, Instagram, what you're looking for. Yeah. This way they can better uh, yeah, serve you. Better for us in Instagram, Facebook, yeah, because if they're like, hey, show me what you have, this would take all day, <laughs> you know. So give them a call. I mean, we'll hit them up online and let them know. Ooh, natural druzies. You know, a lot of these druzy 
cabs you see are like dyed. Um, these are not dyed. These are natural. Starting to see more and more natural druzies. Um, natural druzy pieces. Uh, hey, Junior, somebody wants to see a card. Can I? Can you grab one for me? I did film with them yesterday, and they gave me a card, but I left it in the hotel. That is a stellar piece of Verisite right there. Um, it's not your everyday Lucian for sure. It is Lucian, but or Lucian, whatever you call it. But this is a really nice cut. Another piece of Lucian right there. Over here, uh, that's another piece of Lucian or Lucian. God, that hair is going off. I like it. Wow. Look at that. This is a great piece. I don't know what it is. Some kind of Jasper. It's our old one. Now it's called Armando Customer Cutters, not Armando and Sons anymore. Um, yeah, here's a card. But to contact Junior directly, I would suggest our Armando Custom Rock Cutters on TikTok and Instagram. He can serve you directly when it comes to this material. They do do custom cutting. Yeah, right now. Just have the old ones. Mm-hmm. Are you on Instagram for this? Oh, uh, YouTube. YouTube? Not Instagram? Just YouTube? Mm hmm Alright, cool. What is it? Lapidary Dave. Lapidary Dave? You got a card or sticker or anything? No. Right. <laughs> Lapidary Dave. Yeah, Rock check it out. We, yeah, I will. Well, uh, mostly film, like, the bigger shows, like Tucson and stuff. Do you travel with the shows then? Or mm -hmm. are you based here? Uh, Taos. Taos? Okay. It was just too close not to come by. My grandma vends in Tucson for the last... Vended in Tucson the last 30 years, so... Oh, yeah. I uh, just started filming that. But also I, I teach... Just, I mean, I figured you guys would just... Uh, Where is it? Also teach people how to make jewelry, make cabs, and do gear Oh, review. is that what your channel's about? Is yeah, mostly cool. art, teaching, but the, um, the gem show tours have been paying the bills. That's awesome. <laughs> so well, here, I work locally. I would uh, love to share some of your videos. So. Heck yeah. yeah I'm always on the receiving of any, anything. Visit Durango, and then that's my email, and you can text that number, too. Heck yeah. Thank you so much, my yeah, friend. Yeah, I'm James, by the way. James, I'm David. David, yeah. I saw you had the, the rig, so I was like, all right. He, and I heard you talking. That. I like. I watch a ton of those for, like, uh, thrifting and stuff, looking for, like, vintage video games and toys and stuff. So I totally understand. Like, my girl loves the damn gem, so I imagine you got oh, a cool yeah. following. Yeah, it's 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 a niche, but um, even at twenty grand, I think it's more successful than people I see with a couple hundred thousand. That's awesome. Because so it's such a niche. Well, yeah. yeah that's awesome. But I, you got to stay true and honest. Like, I don't sell things. I go to the vendors, show their card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. But you're helping the industry as a whole. Yeah. yeah it, also, really people are. hate me. Because oh, I'm, well, I, I'm like, oh, I know the, the internet, so I know the miner. This goes for four dollars a pound. They're uh, selling it for ninety. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, there's, it's, that's a fact. It's yeah, not, and, and know, people you're like, not, you're, you're, you're keeping mom and pop from making a living. Well, you can make a living and be honest too. Everyone understands the markup. Yeah, yeah. There's but there's a difference between industry. selling, um, make profiting on ignorance. You know, sure. and I can go on and on and on and on. And on, and on. <laughs> I got yelled at just yesterday. I got the cops called on me in Tucson this year. You know, really? but they didn't do anything. You know, the one of the famous guys from the Outback Opal Hunters called the cops on me, and and it was I had it all on video. It was a great video. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, nice to meet you, man. Have Pleasure, you James. I'm yeah. definitely interested in yeah. in uh, communicating and yeah. maybe seeing how we can YouTube. work. Let's talk. Sure. Definitely. Yeah, I want to see what you're making today. Too. Yep, I watch thrifters and everything. I'm usually stuck at home, so these videos are nice. Thank you so much. Simi, how you doing? How you doing? Do they have a card? Yes, you have the card. Uh, this is a cool piece of Peter site. I didn't know that the super fibrous material, the version, like the super fibrous version could take a good polish like that. I have a lot of friends from Afghanistan selling this quality of Peter site and I had no idea it could take that nice of a polish. But if anybody can do it, Armando, the Armando family can, uh, can do it. If it can be polished, they will polish it.
um, yeah, they cut every single piece. They do the sculptures. They do the jewelry. Everything they sell has come from their family's hands. It's not just resell, um, no love in Hong Kong shaped, thrown in a tumbler. No, that's passion in every piece, for sure. They're, they're off the hook. Are you guys going to be in Buena Vista? Oh, I'm going to buggy over there. It's going to be windy. <laughs> wow. That is a nice piece of sewage there. Suja Light, uh, named after a Japanese dude, Kenichi Suji. Kenichi Suji. Kenichi Suji. And uh, the rumor is he didn't want it named after him. And you know how the, the colonial world is. You slap your name on everything, you know. And uh, I guess the first name they were trying to go with was Royal Azil. Your dad probably knows about it. Royal Azil. Terrible name. Uh, it's just too long, you know. <laughs> Royal Azil. Has he got any Royal Azil, man? You got that Azil? It's just too much. Yeah. Priscilla, it was Priscilla's. See, oh, so when people say Sierra Madre Agate, it's... Oh, man. Yeah. I uh, met the gentleman um, who's doing it now, and he said he hates the name Purple Passion. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, he's real machismo, you know? He's macho, and... and uh, but he's like, you know, you can't rename it. The people have spoken, you know? That's what it is. Same thing with the Suge Lake. You can call it Royal Azil all you want. No one's going to know what the heck you're talking about. How much for that one? 400? It has to be. In Japan, you pronounce G as go, not J. Interesting. So would it be su Sugo Light? Oh, that's what somebody says. Mr. Dead Letter. I'm sure he watches a lot of anime. He probably knows. <laughs> I have some Purple Passion. Awesome, Wyoming Adventures. Dead Letter, that is super interesting. I'm going to try to uh, remember that. That is off the hook. A little hard to see because of how dark and deep it is. Hit that like button. Yeah, go ahead. Hit the like. It really, really helps. Uh, I've learned so much from watching this video. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate you, Wyoming. I'm doing good. I'm thirsty. No, you are the best, Wyoming. Uh, so, lapis. You gotta be careful nowadays. A lot of lapis is being enhanced. They're dying cheaper lapises. This, you know, from the Armando family, you know it's gonna be real. Um, this is the color you wanna look for. They call it ultramarine. Where the color, like his lanyard right there, his lanyard is like the typical type of color you'd see, where this is a little bit darker. They would call this the, um, Ultramarine, which is the real coveted color, these two pieces here. I don't have a problem with the lighter blue, but you do have to be careful sometimes. They are enhancing it. These are natural. Everything from on is natural. But uh, if you're buying, you know, $4 a pound and it's too dark, it's probably dyed, you know. Make a big mess in your tray. Look at these charite nuggies, eggs. Oh, this gentleman? Sweet. Oh, awesome. This is what I bought. I, I'm going to have it next time. Holy smokes. Sushi what? Like what? Uh -huh. So I'm going to have next show, I'm going to have this sushi I already cut. That's easily yeah. $20, $40 a gram material right there. Yeah, yeah very, very beautiful. Um, are you going to put it in jewelry or just cabochons? Uh, cabochons. Oh, nice. Yeah, cabochons. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be cabochons. Um, that is... The best sujalite I've seen at this show. Can I touch that? Yeah. yeah oh, right. thank you. That's got to be... That's probably easily $2,000 right there. Oh, yeah. 
easy. This is, this is raw sujolite, that piece we were talking about earlier, folks. This is, uh, but not just sujolite. Like, it can come really light. Sometimes you can find pieces that are really light like that. There is a market for that, for sure. But that just deep, deep jelly. And it's hard to find it without the Richterite now, the metallic stuff. This yeah. looks like it barely, if, if there's any in there, it's almost yeah. unnoticeable. Yeah, this is a very nice bash. Oh yeah, Jackie, Armando does have the best. Absolutely, Hannah, it is gorgeous. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Armando. Uh, again, Armando and Sons, they'll be at Buena Vista. Check them out in Denver. They'll be full, well, they're full monkey everywhere they go. They always take everything, but uh, if you've been there once, check them out again. They're always coming out with new things. The wire wraps are pretty new. Second year, first year, first year. Atlantisite. Um, their fine jewelry is new and it's super ethical. It's family made. <laughs> They're taking bids on a box of rocks. I don't think anybody here is like, man, we got to do that right now. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I think a lot of people think wire wrap jewelry, hippies, <laughs> dreadlocks. This is really nice. This you can wear to a nice, nice, uh, you can go fine dining with this, you know what I mean? And be proud of it. It's real, real. Not, not for a pirate. <laughs> I have friends, uh, I have friends that just like wrap it up, you know, like. <laughs> just gaspiate? Is that what it is? Well, your dad just lets you take whatever stone you want? You're lucky. You gotta pay him back though. <laughs> it's so hard to find gaspiate. Gaspiate, um, a lot of people kind of sell, there's a, Mojave Turquoise, dyed from the Kingman Company to look like this. It comes in a block, it's nice, it's cool. It's not for everybody, it is a treated. Um, at its best, it's chalk Kingman Turquoise dyed green. At its worst, it's resin. And sweeped up like sawdust from the factory in Shenzhen. But um, green Mojave is pretty much designed to look like this Gaspiite here, which is, I think in its best form from Australia. Uh, I've never cut real Gaspiate. I've cut a lot of fake, and I've cut a lot of Mojave. Mojave is actually a pretty good seller. Um, don't let anybody tell you that purple Mojave is natural from the earth, that color. <laughs> it's not. And uh, But it is, I, I get, you know, $3 a gram for it cut. It's it's cool. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's the green stuff is made to look like that. Sometimes I'll add copper powder into the resins before they stabilize it. And I think it's cool. It's a good use of, in its finest form, pulverized, chalky Kingman. The Kingman Company. Uh, oh, dude, I love you, brother. See you soon. The Kingman Company. I got to go take a look at, let's go talk to them sometime. Very nice. Were you at the 22nd Street show? Is this your booth, sir? No, no. Oh, sorry. I think I recognize this gentleman. I've been seeing, um, oh, thank you so much for the Super Chat Wyoming Adventures. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Dave, I appreciate your videos. No, I appreciate you watching, dude. You're always so kind to me. Thank you, um, one of a mine, Burning Gems. All of you fine folks, Mount At, MT. Is it Mount At? What would you call yourself? I call you MT, MT. All of you fine folks for the Super Chats. I really, really appreciate it. Can't go on too much longer. I'm on 20% battery, but we'll go until the video fails. Um, mammoth Teeth and Mammoth Ivory. It's getting a little bit harder to get. I do hear that they're starting to be like 
I don't know if the word would be sanctions on the rough. But um, I'm starting to see people taking low quality pieces and I'm hearing that it's stabilized in um, Germany. Um, yeah, and I'm starting to see people like just taking ch chunks of the ivory, the um, tusk, stabilizing it different colors, which is a little weird, but it's a good use of material that you otherwise wouldn't be able to cut. Are you folks at the 22nd Street show? Um, do you folks vend at 22nd? 22nd? Uh, do you folks do Tucson? I do Tucson, yes. 22nd Street? No, I don't do 22nd Street. I'm up in uh, the merchant or the marketplace. Oh. You know where that is? Um, like near Oracle? Like yeah, the... Oracle, yeah. yeah. If you're going north, it's on the I recognize the face. Just couldn't put... And I recognize you know, the... I did do 22nd Street for a couple of years. Oh, I might have seen you there, you too. You might have seen me there back, but... Uh, I just walked out of there now. And also just recognize the quality. Oh, okay. <laughs> that amazing stuff, dude. Will you be in Denver? I will be. It'll be oh, in nice. the stockyard. Oh, nice. Basically the second floor. The big ring? Real, no, no. Uh, in the stockyard. You know where, have you been in the second floor where the cafe is? The where bar? the big bull is, the big cow, yeah. Oh, good spot. <laughs> Heck yeah. I'll see you there, my friend. Look at this. R dinosaur eggshell. Trippy. Only 25 bucks. That is cheap. 22 bucks for the piece under there. $18 for a piece like that. That is incredible. Some teeth. Pine cone. These are really, really popular. Uh, cave bear paw. Really cool. It's a nice piece of dinosaur bone about the quality of the stuff I got for Jim. No price on it. Great cell structures. All kinds of nice fossils. Me too, Wyoming Adventures. I get so much turquoise in Native American jewelry, but I don't know enough about identifying... Well, there's a lot of groups on Facebook that'll help you identify turquoise. Um, turquoise has a super big, like it's super popular right now. So people take a lot of pride in identifying and they'll actually argue uh, over what they think your turquoise is. I think one of the groups is identifying natural turquoise is a group on Facebook. It's free and they will argue over, oh, not this guy again. They will argue over uh, identifying your stone for you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, Rocks. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, somebody's posting the porn links. Hmm, raptor claw. Wow. Awesome. It's a casting, but it's still really nice. Oh, so. Let's look at some beads. These are aquamarine. Probably from Vietnam. Uh, natural and he treated citrine. Both are beautiful. The fluorite beads. It's not easy to mail fluorite. It's such a soft material. I wonder if they stabilize it. From Connecticut dang bots. I'm a sucker for fossils. Me too, my friend. Some chrysoprase beads, natural nuggets. I do like um, like chrysoprase donuts. It's, you don't really see those so often. There's um, Appetite, really affordable. 50% off of $24, $12 a strand. That is super, super duper affordable. You're in uh, the Gem Mall in Tucson? Uh, no, I'm in the casino. Oh, casino, okay. I recognize you, I just couldn't couldn't remember where. Some nice agatized corals right here. Check this out. Super cool agatized coral. Maybe from Tampa area, maybe from out of the country. I'm not sure. The smallest citrines are super cute, aren't they? Ah, uh, these are ten dollars a strand.
No. Malachite beads are cool. I just can't, I can't pull off regular beads. Round beads don't look good on me. Uh, I used to have a really nice, super long, maybe 50 inch uh, graduated garnet necklace I made for myself that got stolen. But I could definitely pull off these rotocrosite uh, donuts. They are $200, I think it's $200 a strand, so $100 a strand because it's half off. I would need two of those to make a necklace though. Or it would be cool to like put a silver bench bead in between like every five or something. It would not only make it longer, but it would make it look better. Love the rotocrosite beads. Um, I'm sure these are shaped and then drilled and then tumbled. Love the donuts. What I like is faceted, um, faceted garnet donuts. You see those coming out of Sri Lanka a lot. Um, haven't seen those in a while. I used to get those at the Oracle show in Tucson. Don't really get those anymore. Uh, yeah, moving along. Nice chunk of copper here. Any lavender jade? So do you mean Turkish lavender jade or do you mean lavender jadeite from Myanmar? That is a sweet pea. That's the cannoli right there, huh? <laughs> that is spectacular. Beautiful calcite and then a regrowth of amethyst on top of that with a little bit of uh, hematite on the side or is that pyrite? That's a keeper right there. This is uh, this is what sells your one bedroom, one bath for a million dollars in towels. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I would like to think I've seen most of it all and that is great. Great, great, great. Do you mind me asking what what is it going for? Not bad. I was thinking, uh, about twice that. Oh, yeah. End up in that Marriott in Savannah, Georgia for 50 grand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Great taste. How long have you had it? Is it uh, from Uruguay or Brazil? Oh, Uruguay? Oh, wow. Wow. This is uh, definitely not from Village Originals. It's yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your kindness, brother. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Very, very cool. Let's go over here. Uh, yeah, and that's about it. Try not to bug people when they're talking to customers because the camera scares them away. Nice cobblestone there. Little piece of sewage right there. Some sodalite. Some Jaspers, um, Snore and Sunrise, Lion's Paw Oyster Shell. These are cool. Would you, you wouldn't really consider this a concha bell. It's different, right? Yeah, concha bell. I mean, because yeah, these I, are concha. But no, oh, that one, yeah. You think conchos is the big Like silver. stamped, domed. Yeah. But that's still a concha bell, right? Yeah. I just put them on the leather that way. I don't make them big. It's fantastic. Were you, were you at the Buffalo Thunder show? Oh, I know you from somewhere. I've been here 51 years. Oh, man. Do you do Tucson or Denver? Man. I just do this show now. I used to do Buena Vista and a couple other shows. Maybe Buena Vista because I, I recognize your quality. Yeah, 
I like the Zia. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thanks for being awesome. That guy's really cool. Maybe know him from another life. Oh. Alrighty. I don't think there's anything upstairs. I am so thirsty. Does anyone there do resin lapidary art? Uh, yeah, all the time. Uh, do you mean like... So... Uh, there's a lot of... I mean, what, what would you consider resin? Like, this piece here, it's inside of uh, resin and then darkened. Would you consider that resin art? Do you mean like casting it out of resin? Like putting... Like organite? You know, organite is done in resin. And uh, so the and actually organize they use resin on purpose because it contracts, creating a piezoelectric effect. I guess is the theory. Uh, honestly, I'm not too keen on organite. 